for that starting position. But what do you see from those two guys? They all challenge you. I mean, challenge you with, with arm talent. They challenge you, you know, just the way they operate the offense. Um, and they're, there's, they're two guys that you better game plan for. You know, you can't just say, oh, we're not going to let the quarterback be his now because they will certainly beat you. Tune in Mondays at noon for The Brian Bailey Show, powered by Greenville Utilities, right here on Pirate Radio. Here with Jeff Stein at Brown and Wood. It's a great time to buy a used vehicle. It's not a great time. It's a perfect time to buy a used car from Brown and Wood. We have over 115 used vehicles in stock, and we're number one in the market on price. We have limited lifetime powertrain on all of our used cars under 80,000 miles, so go to brownandwoodauto.com to find out more. Four brands, three generations, two rooftops, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. The Buccaneer Music Hall is your beacon of music in the land of pirates in eastern North Carolina. Open seven days a week with live music, Monday through Wednesday, acoustic night. Thursday, we have line dancing from 7 to 9, followed by karaoke with DJ Dog. On Friday and Saturday night, enjoy the best local bands in the area. Check out Facebook and Instagram for all up-to-date information and band schedules. Y'all come get bucked up! Washington's favorite place to eat and where all the locals go is Down on Main Street. Down on Main Street's famous weekday lunch specials are only $7.99. Stop by for the house salad with grilled chicken, the half club sandwich with chips, or everyone's favorite, the fried shrimp plate. After work, Down on Main Street is the perfect spot for dinner and a drink on the patio. Join Down on Main Street every Wednesday for half price wings from 4 to close. Down on Main Street on Main Street in historic downtown Washington. Go Pirates! Save a load on a new John Deere compact utility tractor and loader from Quality Equipment. It's never been easier to get the best brand on the market at an unbeatable cash price or with great financing at our lowest ever monthly payment. Now is the time to get that tractor package you've been dreaming of to get your next job done right. Stop by one of our 36 locations in North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia or visit us online at qualityequip.com. Here today with Christy Conway from ENC Pirate Realty and exciting news about your new partnership with Allen Tate Realtors. We are excited to be a partner with Allen Tate Realtors. We felt that being a part of the Allen Tate family would bring with it the technology, marketing, and referral capabilities our agents need to make their real estate business more successful and allow us to serve our clients better. Please visit us at our office on Fire Tower Road in Greenville or online at encpiratrealty.com. And remember, at ENC Pirate Realty, Allen Tate, we close the deal or someone walks the plank. Go Pirates! There's a common misbelief today that to make it further, you need to push yourself. That you need to give up any joy to continue your rigid routine. Or you could try another way. Take some time to enjoy life. Like having a Michelob Ultra with friends. Because happiness is essential to living an exceptional life. Michelob Ultra, a refreshing and balanced flavor with only 2.6 carbs and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Michelob Ultra, proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. At U.S. Cellular, you can get a new phone for $830 off with no trade-in needed with any unlimited data plan, which means you don't have to trade in your old phone for a new one. That must sound good to you, guy with a junk drawer. I'm going to sell it to my sister. Ah, who am I kidding? It's going right in the junk drawer. Get $830 off. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Visit uscellular.com for details. This is Brandon Tate, owner and operator of Atlantic Wireless, an authorized agent for U.S. Cellular since 1997. Visit AtlanticWireless.com to find the store near you. We go beyond the call. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. Can you be quiet, please? Thank you. Welcome to Pirate Radio Live. How's everybody doing? You already know, my guy. I'm a current log snapper. T Top 5, man. That's all I'm going to say. We're blue collar, we're hard workers, that's who our fans are, that's who our school is. Cliff, what's up? It's Brian. Loneliness is worse than um, than COVID. <laughs> it's, a proven, it's a proven fact. I don't want a stalker. Bro, what are we doing here? Bro. Just a bunch of dudes sitting in a room talking into sticks, man. <laughs> <laughs> so you're the oh. Oh. You can't say that. Cliff, thank you for letting me hijack the show. If it wasn't funny, then let's blame it on the duck. <laughs> now live from the Pirate Radio Studios in the heart of the Pirate Nation, here is your host, 
Clip Brock. Welcome in to Pirate Radio Live here on a Friday. Clip Brock here with you inside the Pirate Radio studios. Coming to you on Pirate Radio 92.7 FM and Greenville 104.1 in washington we're on 12 30 online pr 927 fm.com and you can watch the program and join in on the fun friday festivities on facebook live and youtube you can check us out there and be a part of the show as a lot of folks already chiming in on this chat gang friday we'll have fun we got some guests coming up as well including brian north our number one We'll talk Final Four. We'll talk Pirate Baseball. We'll talk Pirate Hoops and more. Coming up with North in about 20, 25 minutes or so. Also on today's program, Tony Dunn. Man, talk to these folks in a while because we've been off the last two Fridays. Tony Dunn will join us. We've got Panthers news today. As last time we talked to Tony, he talked about the team having a plan. Well, part of that plan includes Derek Brown, apparently. So we will talk to Tony about that. Chandler looks confused at what I'm talking about. So maybe he hasn't seen the headlines today. He has. He just gave me a thumbs up. Um, David Glenn will join us to talk about NC State's magical run to the Final Four and if that run can continue and what that means. I had some questions about can NC State sustain this and and what do they look like next year and beyond. Uh, My thought would be enjoy it while you can. I I don't think this is something we're going to see year in, year out. This is just one of those special deals. But, folks, I've been wrong before. I could be wrong again. We'll get David Glenn's thoughts on that. Coming up on uh, today's edition of Pirate Radio Live in hour number two, hour three, Morgan Ehlers will join us on the program. Uh, We'll get his take on ECU basketball and uh, what they do this offseason. They have lost a lot. Now it's time to bring some some studs in. So that is next on the to-do list for Mike Schwartz. We'll talk to DJ Captain Morgan about that and Mark Greenhelch, Golf Shop Radio Show, less than a week away from the Masters getting underway. So uh, we'll get a few of his uh, picks, guys, to watch in Augusta next week. Got all that. Your comments. And Shirley Rhodes and Chandler Honeycutt, who are hanging out in Studio B. Hello, people. Hey, Clipper. How you doing today? Doing great. Have y'all lost weight? <laughs> <laughs> Not yet. I've lost 20 pounds today. There's a plan. Uh, y'all got a plan. We have a plan. <laughs> All right. Yeah. We'll talk more there about is that a plan. later. Yes. Sure. Uh, probably next week. All right. More on that next week. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Um, so Shirley, for the um, the bumper music today, which of course is brought to you by Weldon Mills Theater. You're going beach slash Buffett. Yes, we're going Buffett and Beach. Buffett and Beach on a Friday. That's, yeah, that's that's right up my alley right there. I mean, it's a nice day outside. It's uh, there's a little nip. There's a little bit of a nip. You're right about that, but it is nippy. There's a little but nip. It is a little nipply. I mean, nippy uh but uh you know it's that time of year you're starting to think about going to the beach and you know it's friday it's three o'clock in the afternoon and as jimmy buffett once said it's five o'clock somewhere amen sister did somebody else say that too alan jackson alan jackson, alan jackson did. but he did it with jimmy buffett. okay i just i knew somebody else had said that yes and i was thinking alan jackson um jamie says whatever happened to the three-point footage good question jamie a great question i got a text earlier today that said almost finished with the three-point contest so it's out there oh it's wait the, it's not out there it's in there and we're gonna get it out there it's in it's in the lob yeah can can, can i give you a spoiler alert no no a spoiler no it has to do with me yes okay you didn't win did you? i did not win <laughs> you stunk i stunk up the joint yes oh, i did not man. represent my gender very well <laughs> <laughs> i was the only female in the contest and it, it shows that i have not shot a basketball in well over 20 years you are uh <laughs> caitlin shark Shark, shark. You're, you're Caitlin Shark. I'm Haley. I'm Haley Van Lith. If shooting a basketball was how she defended Caitlin Clark, how about that? Mm. You Caitlin are. Clark. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was really bad. 
Don no, I, I will Bailey. say, I will say, my shots were online. Like, they were not air balls. You were oh, the line. Rebecca Nogo. Yeah. The iron was very unkind to me that day. We did find out, though. You're Kim after- Sulky. <laughs> <laughs> Kim Sulky. <laughs> <laughs> McCulkey? You are uh, Boo Boo, Doo Doo Watkins. <laughs> Doo Doo Watkins. Oh, sorry. I, the first thing that popped into my head as soon as you said that, I was like, wait, I thought it was Doo Doo Brown. That's the song. Never mind. Doo Doo um, uh, We did find out, though, we did have a little bit of an NCAA kind of uh, parallel. Doo 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 Doo. Yeah, did, did you not notice that the rim was slightly crooked? No, I never know. Was that discussed? Uh, was it that was discussed? It was not discussed until we were all done. We didn't notice it until after we were all done. All right. Uh-huh. But the the rim was not exactly perfect. <coughs> well, Jamie, we'll have that to you at some point. I'm waiting to get it in my hands and then uh put a little magic on it and then we'll throw it out there. So, um yeah, but you know, if you were thinking that Shirley won, nah. Yeah did not happen so that leaves it up to myself everybody else zach (laughs) alex harper and defensive coordinator blake harrell Mm -hmm. one of those took home the title all right steve is in the chat says hfmfs hf to you steve chad with the bang bang chat gang jerry says hello fam and chat gang hello to you jerry jamie says hey now hey now Jimmy's asking what is uh he was directing this question to Chad, but a lot of uh a lot of options this weekend. He said, Chad, are you watching ECU, FAU, or WrestleMania? So I guess SmackDown tonight, along with Pirates and Owls and the women's final four tonight as well, mixed in with some Braves home opener and some other stuff, uh some baseball. Saturday, you've got ECU FAU. You've got night one of WrestleMania. You got men's final four. You got an ECU scrimmage, which we'll be covering in the morning. Uh, ECU softball is playing this afternoon at five. Softball. They'll be uh, playing tomorrow and on the mic, on the PA, Shirley Rhodes. PA. Congrats. Watch those tweets. Thank you. Is the women's championship Sunday? I would think so if they're playing tonight. Well, I would think so. Yes. But I want a Women, confirmation. It, it's confirmed. What, I'm, I'm what time? You, <laughs> uh, I'm going to guess. Guess the time. I'm going to say 7.30. How about 3 o'clock? <laughs> In right. the middle of the afternoon. In the middle of the afternoon. <laughs> it is on ABC ESPN. ESPN Plus. 3 o'clock? 3 o'clock? 3, three o'clock three on a, a Sunday? 3 o'clock? Oh, I saw what you did there. So, uh, Clark, I don't know if I've ever, and I probably won't watch much, if any, of it, but I am intrigued by the Women's Final Four, and I don't think I could ever say that in my life. And why is that? Because of the the image and the stars? The star power. Yeah, Caitlin Clark. It was Angel Reese, but now she's out. I mean, that's really can all. Westmore, go. Can he get over the hump? And nah, I don't care about that. It's all about the stars. Caitlin Clark, and I then, guess buckets. Yeah. Um, Chloe Bucker. Kitts, my girl Chloe Kitts from South Carolina. I, I'm I'm somewhat interested in it, and I hate the men's final four. Purdue. Not fun to watch. NC State. They're NC State. Fun to watch. True, but they're NC State. That is true. UConn won it last year, and they're a machine, and I don't like rooting for the favorite. And then Alabama. I don't like Nate Oates. I'm tired of Alabama and all sports. They're a pretty controversial team too. it's a unlikable final four in my humble and i say this humbly humble opinion say so if you had to choose between the men's and the women's final four men's okay so you're not going the women's route no i, I just I, I like men's basketball more than women's basketball why are you shaking your head sexist 
All right. You want me to throw that question to you? I bet I've watched more women's basketball. Throw it to me. I've watched more women's basketball than you have this year. I was courtside for a women's basketball. I was too. So we're even there. I watched some last Saturday. Did you watch uh, Iowa LSU? No, I like men's basketball more. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, there you go. Come on, Sean. Come on, Sean. Come on, Jan. Ah, let's see. What you got there on the agenda? We got Skip in the house. What's up? There we go. Eric Eric said, uh, (laughs) I knew we needed some Eric in here. Cheryl poops. <laughs> uh, he's, he's, he's not done. Because he, uh, he also has Sue Turd. <laughs> Steve says Paige Brickers. Uh, let's see. Any, oh, that, that's good. That gave me a chuckle. Good. Yeah, Jamie, I'm going to sprinkle a little magic fairy dust on it and, and make it all better. Know, Clip, uh, people are looking for you to sprinkle your magic fairy dust on this whole thing and make it all better. All better. Perry is in the house. PJ. Oh, PJ, I know he's ready for some pirate baseball. You know where he's at? You know where he's uh You know um, where he's at? <laughs> he's in the dupe, baby. He's where? The dupe. <laughs> Wait, what were we calling it? Dupin, the dupe. Clown, dupe, dupe <laughs> <clowny>. <laughs> I, I cannot remember. Duplin Clowney. <laughs> Duplin County. Is that Jadavion's cousin? <laughs> yes. The dupe. He's from the dupe, baby. He's, he's the terrible one. The dupe. Dupe the do. I need to uh, find a line, man. It's 2024. Gambling is legal in the state of North Carolina. Let's see if we can get a line for ECU FAU. And oh man when i was in raleigh the other night had several people that i came across that had the over in that game mm. it was 13 and a half mm. and they were loving it loving every minute loving it, it loving it loving it when, it when there was a double that scored two to put the uh over to cash out i am not seeing it on DraftKings, so i'm gonna have to check out another sports book if anybody has seen a line for ecu fau let me know oh boy by the way you know you guys have been telling me that i should uh cash out some money i probably need to do that because i am on a losing streak yeah man you i lost my butt on canes last night So. Um, Kenny said, did y'all hear the vice yeah. president interview yet? She claimed, she claimed women's college basketball didn't start having a women's bracket system until 2022. I'm going to say that's, uh, factually incorrect. But uh, no, Wait, I, who I, said that? I did not see that. I guess Kenny Curling says the vice president. That would be Kamala Harris. Kamala. Kamala, 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 Kamala Harris. Jamie said when ECU played UAB last weekend, I couldn't find a site that would let you bet on it. Well, Jamie, you're not a true gambler because it's out there. You just got to you gotta search. Chandler, you found one yet? Nope. Yeah, bless, man. I knew I'd have to do everything around here. Hey, can you calm down? <laughs> I'm, I'm, I would say I'm extremely calm right now. I don't know if I've been calmer. Calm, calm, oh, slamming your pen is calm? I dropped my pen so I could pick up my phone. Would you like for me to hold my pen while I have my phone in my hand? <laughs> that looks very professional. <laughs> You're a good multitasker. Maybe I'll put it behind my oh, ear. Oh, that is very professional. Maybe I'll go, uh, who's the guy that can't coach? That Belichick loves? Coach the lines. Josh McDaniels? Defensive. No. Matt Patricia. Yes. Matt Patricia. Where's Matt Patricia now? Does he have a job that Belichick's gone? You think Belichick's done? Coaching? Yeah. No. I don't think so. He's not anywhere right now, right? What are you looking at on your phone? I'm looking up the the odds for this baseball game. You're not looking on DraftKings, are you? No. All right, good. (gasps) What do you got? What is this? What is, what is this? What do you got? It's this basketball. <laughs> <laughs> it's 
And not only is it basketball, it's women's basketball. If you look up Matt Patricia on Wikipedia and it's got his uh, resume, for 2023, it says de facto defensive coordinator and senior defensive assistant. De facto. You never want to be a de facto. You want to be firmly implemented. I'm a de facto. (laughs) (laughs) You're de facto executive producer of Pirate Radio. Uh, Grimes on Bigfoot has a question directed at Sean. All right. Sean, what is up with Jeep people driving around with rubber ducks? Are you part of that movement? What is up with people with rubber ducks in their Jeeps? Hilarious. Um, I don't know. I actually have some. Uh, I have a couple of ducks in my. Actually, I have four. But I, it's like a Jeep thing. I don't know. I, it's. I, it's um, I can tell you why. Uh, Tell the, the me why. Um, supposedly within those that have Jeeps, it's kind of like a community. The Jeep community, we'll the call Jeep, it. The Jeep, yes. It's um, like a It's a random act of kindness. And they encourage um, Jeep owners, uh, if you have a little rubber duck, to uh, gift one to another uh, Jeep owner. And so, I told Chandler, Chandler, how many ducks have you received? I have four. You've been given four? Mm-hmm. Good grief. All I was given one from Shirley. Okay. That was the very first one I had. And I had seen Jeeps with ducks on their on their windshield or, or their dashboard. Mm-hmm. And when she gave me a duck, I said, what is this about? Like, I don't understand this. Then, uh, maybe a week later, I go out to my car. And I don't know who this was. It was a random person put one on my uh, door handle on my uh, driver's side door. It and seems to be more common with those who drive Wranglers, <laughs> Jeep Wranglers, um, but you do see them occasionally in a different type of uh, Jeep vehicle. But typically, it's the Wrangler community. They they it's it's just it's something that they do. They just call it a random act, a random act of kindness. So we do not know why ducks or why it started. Um, Chandler, you had all those ducks. Your ducks in a row, so to speak. There was another Jeep in the parking lot. I said, hey, man, you ought to put a duck on that Jeep. And what did you... You were like, no, these are my ducks. But you got to pass the ducks on. I think if you've been given a duck, you keep that duck. But you have ducks of your own that you either purchase or whatever. And you can... You can do it either way, I think. But I think... I don't know. I mean, because there's one... uh, jeep wrangler that actually parks in the parking lot next to ours and they have probably like 10 or 12 on their dashboard and uh do you put yours on the dashboard i have to get like the uh i have to get either double-sided tape or like a little suction cup to put them up there yeah because they tend to slide yeah so no would be the answer so what do you do with yours i've got them in my little um holder i guess you ought to to get a little bowl and put some water in and let them swim around (laughs) while you're driving (laughs) that would be great till it hits a pothole can you put your phone up you're not gonna find it and you're not what are you doing i'm trying to figure out why jeeps (laughs) (laughs) it's basically a respect thing great respect (laughs) ton ton of respect (laughs) ton of respect to your jeep quack just ton of respect incredible respect great amount of respect great respect so much respect that's chandler going through all his different ducks that he's got in his uh his jeep right now um people are having trouble finding the line alex wanted to bet on the game so he could guarantee we win i guess he would be taking the opposite side i've known people to do that yeah i mean me reverse betting is always fun it's 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 actually not fun i said that sarcastically <laughs> yeah it's uh it's kind of brutal, but it's necessary sometimes. Yeah. It's sometimes needed. you have to do it. Yeah. All right. Let's take a break. We'll come back. Brian North will join us. Jamie says, did Wes leave the duck on your Jeep? No, because Wes doesn't have a Jeep. Yeah. So, wait, Shirley, tell us about your Jeep. I have a Renegade. That doesn't count. 
it, it really doesn't. It does not count. That so was to my speak. point. However, I was trying to make Chandler look dumb, and yeah. then I realized, wait, Shirley does have a Jeep. So I now I'm Jeep, fighting out of the corner. I have a Jeep Renegade, but I do not have a Jeep Wrangler. <laughs> Although you do see other people that have Jeeps that have the ducks. But she anyway, part of the Jeep I was actually gifted um, some some ducks from uh, a uh, a friend of mine who has a Jeep Rubicon. And he gave me about three or four ducks, so I had them in my console. And then when Chandler got his new Jeep Wrangler, I was like, oh, now I can duck someone. <laughs> so I ducked, yeah. duck me. I ducked Chandler. Don't duck me too much. Oh, uh, duck off. It's only, it was only that one time, Chandler. We'll take a break when we return. Should we head south or, or east or west? No, nah, let's go north. Let's go north. Brian North will join us. Then, vision is a good time. It brought so much pleasure. Make me want to go back again. For years, Callie Ann Phelps has been singing about Phelps Chevrolet. Phelps Chevrolet is the one for you. Low, low prices, service too. See the big dealer right away. Carolina's finest, Phelps Chevrolet. And you'll agree with what Skyler Phelps has to say. Nobody beats Phelps Chevrolet's prices. Nobody. The name you can depend on. Phelps Chevrolet. Get you one. <laughs> Saturday, April 13th, the fourth annual NC Strut Masters Championship is back. Presented by Whitetail Properties Real Estate. Turkey hunters from all over the country are headed east to put their skills to the test, and the top scoring birds will win big cash prizes up to $30,000. Live performances by Sadie Bass. Nate Hosey, Styles Hurry, and much, much more. Registration is now open for two-man teams at ncstrutmasters.com. The new weigh-in will be held at Briley's Farm on Old Pactolus Highway in Greenville. Brought to you by Sam Jones Barbecue, Grady White Boats, Greenville Marine Outdoor, Big Rock Power Sports, Avian X Decoys, Matavo Tools, Country March Stores, Mountain Dew, Robinson Law Firm, and Old North State Trust. It's the NC Strutmasters Championship. We'll see you there. <laughs> Hey guys, I've devised a plan to find better home internet. Kids, you scout the web for the best deals. Honey, you monitor our projected data usage. Or we could avoid that hassle and go with U.S. Cellular's home internet. There's no guesswork, and their internet's faster than ever. New plan. Ellen, you sign up for U.S. Cellular home internet. Madison, you bring me snacks while I stream the game. Let's do this. Bundle and save on U.S. Cellular's new and improved home internet. Just $29.99 when bundled with a wireless plan. U.S. Cellular, built for us. Terms apply. Visit uscellular.com for details. In this new world of having everything delivered to your home or office, why wouldn't you start using Cellular Warehouse for all of your cellular deliveries? Toby Williams and his team are in the business of delivering phones and tablets every day to customers, which enables you to take the hassle out of visiting a store. The best thing about this great service is that it is free. Call Toby Williams today at 252 252- 799-7051 and let his team make your wireless experience fast and easy. Cellular Warehouse, your local U.S. Cellular authorized agent. Be sure to check out David Price Construction for all of your commercial or custom residential renovation and building needs. Run by ECU alumni, David Price Construction specializes in commercial projects, maintenance on facilities, and large-scale residential renovations and additions. Proud to be voted the Remodeler of the Year by the Home Builders Association of Raleigh Wake County in 2018 and Best Business Commercial Remodel Project winner for 2020. David Price Construction, the proud ECU Home Services Partner. Hey, Pirate Nation, be sure to have the best and comfortable shoes with a stop at Fleet Feet. This is ECU alum Chris Lunyon, owner of Fleet Feet of Greenville, and we provide solutions through one-on-one service to runners, walkers, and everyone in between. Fleet Feet has the tools and technology to get you in the right shoe, including a 3D foot scanner that measures arch height, width, and more. Come visit us at 207 East Arlington Boulevard in the old Gordon's Golf location. Fleet Feet, we run for you. You want subs made with high-quality meats and cheeses, you go to Jersey Mike's. You want high-quality radio ideas, you go to me, like this. I'm an astronaut on a mission to find water on the moon. But because I'm a genius, I realize that what humanity actually needs in space is high-quality meats and cheeses from Jersey Mike's. 
Now to figure out how to remove the helmet and eat the sub without my head exploding. Here goes nothing. Always high quality meats and cheeses. Jersey Mike's, a sub above. This is Josh Gross, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. Listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. This hour is brought to you by Pirate Water. Get ready to party, pirates. Go to drinkpiratewater.com to find your new treasure. 21 and older only. Pirate Water. Why be yourself when you can be a pirate? Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Vacation spots are right here in our very own backyard. You can take a trip to a state park and enjoy traditional camping, RV space, and also air-conditioned cabins that can be rented with Wi-Fi. If you're by a lake, be sure to check out the opportunities to rent a canoe or kayak and get out on the water. Your next adventure is right around the corner. For more information, please visit ncparks.gov. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here's Cliff. All right, looking at the we got some day baseball going on. Buccaneer Music Hall scoreboard presented by the book. The, book. the, the Tigers just got a opposite field RBI double to take an eighth inning five to four lead over the A's. Uh, so two outs in the eighth. Tigers up by one. Blue Jays up one in the eighth over the Bronx Bombers. Uh, one nothing that score in the eighth inning in the top of the eighth blue jays with the lead on the road cubs have opened it up against the dodgers it is six to two dodgers scored two in the first cubs scored five in the second and have added one in the third so they lead it six to two over la and that is all going on right now rays and rockies will get underway next hour as will the o's and the pirates orioles on the road today and pittsburgh who is six and one on the year uh braves will have their home opener tonight against the diamondbacks chans nationals at home against the philadelphia phillies so uh, we'll follow some baseball throughout today's program. All right, let's head out to the Pirate Radio Live Line. Joining us, WCTI 12 Sports uh, Director and Newsman. He is Brian North joining us on a Friday edition of Pirate Radio Live. North, how you doing, man? Doing great. Hope you are. Yes, sir. Long time no chat since we last talked. Uh, NC State has won, I think, six games uh, in basketball. And East Carolina has lost six-plus players. So uh, we've got a, a lot to catch up on here. On a Friday edition of Pirate Radio Live, we'll start with hoops and uh, North. Uh, this, I guess they're they're ESPN thirty for thirty putting together Surviving Advance the uh, sequel here, and uh, looks like it should be coming to an end. But then again, folks probably said that when they saw Hakeem Olajuwon and uh, Clyde Drexler back in the day, right? So uh, how about this this state run and can it continue uh, throughout this weekend into Monday night? Yeah, both for the men and the women. And every time you look at their matchup, you go, yeah, this is probably it. <laughs> and you look at this game against Purdue with Zach Eady and their big man, and you're like, all right, D.J. Burns has been a nice run, but it's probably done. But you just you never know. This is why they play the games. You never know with these matchups. Uh, stay playing with that confidence. So, look, why not? I, Purdue's good, but I don't sit there and say they're definitely going to lose tonight. And and even with UConn, as great as they're playing, you just when you get a hot team like this, just sometimes magic happens. So, um, while I would not place my ducats uh, on the, the game, um, I wouldn't be surprised if, uh, if with anything that would happen tonight. Brian, I'm sure there's, and then now I'll I'll do some research on it. But I, I, it popped in my head now that have you can you think of another coach that was pretty much gone and not only saved his job but will now be a legend in Raleigh and yeah. uh, we'll see what he can do from here and we can get into to, to what happens next year and beyond for Kevin Keats and NC State uh, later on or at another date but can you think of a coach that was basically in the grave and uh, is now is on top of the world like Kevin Keats? Yeah, not right off the top of my head. I, maybe Jim Valvano back in the day. I don't know but you know, I was thinking of, like, Steve Fisher when he had that run with yeah. Michigan. Um, but he was the interim coach. Uh, Bill Frieder had already been let go. But 
Um, not off the top of my head. I mean, there have been coaches that got hot at the right time. It was close. and um, But this is – I don't know if I've ever seen anybody win basically nine elimination games, eight elimination games, whatever it's been for them, um, and just having lost four in a row. I mean, that's, that's the other thing is they, they were horrible. They'd lost four in a row and looked bad. And then all of a sudden, now they turn it around and it's complete opposite. So – uh, the fortunes of, of Kevin Keith has been pretty amazing in, in this whole deal. Uh, we had Mac McCarthy on the other day. I said kind of a, a similar story for the men and women, and he quickly stopped me and said, no, nah, the, the women were, were good all year and, uh, you know, belong here. It is a similar story, though, Brian, and they are major underdogs. And, uh, the, you know, the, the men maybe not taking on the favorite, but Purdue has been an absolute machine. UConn, the betting favorite right now, but the women – uh, taking on South Carolina, that right. certainly is an uphill battle for them coming up tonight. Yeah, well, South Carolina has been great all year, undefeated, and uh, they've been on a mission as well. And so, but but you're right, the NC State ladies were in the top five most of the year, top ten most of the year. Had a little bit of a struggle with three or four games and a couple of tough road games, and everybody kind of forgot about them. But they've uh, they've roared back to life, and they've got Sanaya Rivers, who is um, from Wilmington who actually played at South Carolina, and now she's going to go against her old team. And so um, there's some great history here. You know, sometimes South Carolina gets lost in the the shuffle, but it's only a four-hour drive from here. There's a lot of local history. We had Mindy Ballou, Fitzpatrick from West Carteret, who was one of the all-time greats who played there. And so uh, there's some good history there, too. And NC State dominated the series between the two teams through the years, just, uh, you know, the last meeting a couple years ago, South Carolina won and. Boy, they look great. Dawn Staley, who I remember as a player at UVA and her attitude then and how great she was, and she's kind of instilled that at South Carolina. So uh, we'll see if they keep it going tonight or if NC State continues that magical run as well. Brian, I've never been a, a fan of the women's basketball game, um, and, and I'm, I've gotten swept up in it a little bit. I watched some of LSU UCLA last Saturday. I watched um, the majority of Iowa and LSU on Monday night, and I'll, I'll probably find myself checking out UConn and, and Iowa tonight because I, I kind of got to the point where I was sick of hearing about Caitlin Clark, and I was like, what is this all about? And then I watched the game and was like, okay, she is working worthy of every accolade you throw at her because she's incredible. That It's kind of not fair that somebody can shoot that good and also handle the ball that well and pass that well. I mean, it's uh, it's all around. And, and fun, just like any sport, good basketball is good basketball. Fun basketball is fun basketball. And uh, when she plays and, and some of these other teams, it is fun. When you have stars. Uh, and, you know, uh, the interesting thing I've been hearing this week is Everybody wants to push the ratings and push that the, the women's game is, is really coming along now. But I heard this stat that the number of people who watched the LSU-Iowa uh, game tonight was like 12 million. But that was the same number who watched when a person named Cheryl Miller uh, was playing for USC. And she was a great star. She was transformative back in 1983 when she was playing uh, for USC and um, she was getting a lot of the accolades of could she play in the NBA? Is she the best women's player? You know, could she play in the men's game? Very similar skill set and style and, and, and interest. So when you get stars like that, people want to watch. And, and Caitlin Clark has done that. I, Caitlin Clark probably doesn't even have the personality that Cheryl Miller did back in the day. But she's got the game that people just want to watch. And let's, let's just be honest, there's probably some other components in there of, uh, you know, being – Larry Burdish in, in her appearance. and um, <laughs> So I think that attracts a lot of people as well. Yeah. But she's lived up to it. That's the thing. Is she's delivered on when people have been watching the most is when she's delivered and, and played just absolutely phenomenal. And that's been good. And now I always say this, can the women's game sustain this once she's gone to the WNBA? Does the WNBA become the beneficiary? Is she that good and, and take it to the next level? But enjoy it while it's happening now because uh, she's been great and, and been fun to watch. And, and sometimes you just have to enjoy it in the moment and not worry about everything that surrounds it. Brian, uh, Cheryl Miller, a little before my time, but doing the math, I guess. So was she doing this without the old, hey, this is Reggie Miller's sister? Like, she came before Reggie, right? Yes, yeah, she was older than Reggie. And, and although people knew of Reggie at the time, but she was considered the better basketball player of the family. Right. <laughs> so, um, but she was, she, she was just phenomenal. And she just had that, that um, man's style of a game, I guess is what it was described back in the day. And just was 
And she had that flash, too. She had a little bit of that Magic Johnson flair uh, of her game, too, that people like to watch. And, and at the time, it was just kind of hot, and it was the big quality thing. And um, But I, I remember it. It's just So when I heard the numbers this week of, wow, 12 million people watched when she played as well, just kind of puts it in perspective a little bit. It's about stars. It's about yeah. people who will attract you for their skill set and what they do when all eyes are up. Brian North joining us, Pirate Radio Live Line. Brian, uh, do you want to get in the way of UConn men or South Carolina women? You want to throw out a, uh, an upset in one of these, or you think we'll see chalk coming up this weekend and Monday night? Yeah, well, the way this tournament's been, I, you know, I, I I wouldn't be surprised if they lost. I mean, I, I certainly there's betting favorites, but I, I, I'm not going to sit there and, and say that uh, – they're that dominant where they, they're going to roll through everybody. No, I think there's definitely the possibility that if they don't play well, both of them could be upset this weekend. Yeah, I mean, UConn, did, did, we need to get Ariel to get us a prop out there. Will Danny Hurley's son play uh, <laughs> tomorrow and Monday? Because he plays in every game because yeah. they win every game by 30 in the tournament. It is uh, it is incredible. And so I brought up a good point. I, I meant to mention it at the end of last week, early this week, but uh, Mark Titus uh, on Barstool said that he hasn't watched a lot of UConn this tournament because every game's been a blowout. And I was like, that's a great point. I haven't watched a ton of UConn basketball because there's kind of no point in watching it. No, I think I was watching a little bit when it was close last week until they went on that, what, 20 to nothing? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I saw that. And I, I'm done, all right? Don't need to watch anymore. But, you know, I, I've watched Tristan Newton a little bit just because of the, the ECU history that he had, and so there's some interest there. But, but no, that, that's been the thing. They, they have, uh, during this tournament, now during the regular season, they weren't nearly right. dominant, but they've, they've hit on something now or turn it up or notch or something, but they've kind of, like NC State, found that next level. But again, the layoffs are always interesting to me in, in this tournament. You know, you play two games and you're off for several days, and, and can they sustain it? Their thing is they've got the experience. They've been there. They kind of know what to expect going into this weekend. Brian North joining us. The only team that can beat NC State in any sport is uh, ECU baseball, Brian. They went to Raleigh this week and put it to the Pirates on the road at FAU this weekend. But uh, that was one that... Cliff Godwin and company needed, first of all, they needed to snap the the losing streak in Raleigh, um, but that was their fifth straight win, and kind of got a little behind the eight ball, losing at UTSA, losing that series two games to one, so it kind of feels like, okay, they're back on pace here, let's see what they do the rest of the way in conference, and also still got some huge uh, midweek matchups coming up. Yeah, and I, looking at RPI stuff and looking at tournament stuff, I think these midweek matchups, I I still think it, when it comes to the AAC, you know, they're going to pretty much have their way, or they'll be at least near the top when it's all said and done, and, and they're going to have some hiccups along the way. But uh, I think RPI-wise, you, you really need to win some of these midweek games, and uh, anytime you can beat an ACC team, an in-state team, it seems like everybody's ranked or, or has a pretty good RPI, it's, it's a good win. So uh, I, I think for Cliff Godwin, when you start looking big picture down the road, uh, home regionals, super regionals, all that stuff. You got to start stacking these wins. So I thought that was a big one against NC State. Brian North joining us, Pirate Radio Live Line North. We get a little football talk in. Well, uh, let me go back to ECU and hoops for a moment. Uh, the mass exodus from this basketball team, and you've got yeah. some that uh, are leaving certainly on their own volition. With uh, you look at Brandon Johnson and. Uh, looks like he's going to make a, a pretty penny down there playing for Jim Laranega in Miami. Mm-hmm. And then you've probably got a few that Coach Schwartz had a chat with and said uh, your time could be up here at East Carolina if you want to go for another opportunity. Uh, go it, It's out there for you. Now we, we've got to see what comes in here. And and I'm look, I, I've been saying, hey, Justin Wright is in the portal. Let's get him back home. From what I understand, he would love to come back closer to home. Let's, let's bring in the Farmville Central Jag. And, and there's there's got to be a ton of talent out there available. Can we get them here? Uh, I've even I've talked to people from Team Boneyard who kind of you know map out a plan on what they do in free agency, quote unquote, uh, transfer portal stuff. So the, there seems to be a plan in place, Brian. But right now, fans are just saying we've got no players other than RJ and Cam Hayes, uh, and we are, we're kind of just looking like what the hell's going on here. It's the scary part about the portal stuff and how quickly it can fall apart. There's no guarantee you can put it together. Now, as always, when you go in the portal, there's more people to go in that come back out, right? I mean, some guys just, their careers magically disappear in there because the numbers don't work out. So you, you kind of, you think you're always going to have options, 
But boy, when you you're losing what ten guys or whatever it's been, and you, you just got to fill out bodies just to have a team and, and have somebody confident. So, but guys need a place to go. And that's the one thing about the portal is there's only so many scholarships out of there, and everybody thinks how great they are and they're going to upgrade. But that's not always the case. We just saw a kid from Kinston, Isaac Parson, who was at Winston Salem State, enter the portal. He upgraded to NC Central, Justin Wright's old school, so he gets to move up. Now you've got Damian Dunn, who yeah. is at Temple, and now is at Houston. I, I got a feeling he wants to land at an ACC school in state. Is my thoughts, but he's out there and wants to get closer to home. So, but it's it's doing this math and having to do it really quick, and coaches trying to figure out who fits and who doesn't, and. Um, it's still trying to figure out the formula. Coaches like to have a formula, right? The, in the past, they always had a formula for what made them successful. Now, everyone's still trying to figure out this formula for the portal and, and what's going to work. And it's going to be a while until they figure it out, especially with kids as transient as they are right now. But I'm telling you, when you, when you only have two guys on your team and you, you have to have five to start next year, uh, you got to microwave it in a hurry. So I'm real curious to see. After coming off last year when they didn't, have very many guys go now with right. mass exodus i'm curious to see how he, he rebuilt it this year yeah and ecu uh pirates.com has been updating the roster let's see if they got it well they still got valentino pinedo on the roster uh everybody else has been wiped out so uh technically brian i think we're at seven right now on this yeah. ecu roster Jeez. yeah uh, it's just it's so weird but if you hit it right next year. But this is the thing with this portal world. It's going to be microwave great one year, and then all of a sudden everything's going to fall apart the next. The the, the maddening turns uh, and the ups and downs in the portal world are, are going to be real interesting. It's not going to be that consistently always good, consistently always bad deal. You do have a chance every year if you can find the incentives, which i.e. is the money part of it, which is always the interesting thing. Brian North joining us. North got a scrimmage going on tomorrow for East Carolina football. Spring game quickly approaching. And I am I'm, I'm a little confused on how to talk about ECU football this offseason because of last year. I'm a little gun shy to, to yep. tell people what I've heard that, hey, the quarterbacks look good and everything looks good out there because we did that last year. And ECU had one of the worst offenses in the country. Having said that, I'm hearing Jake Garcia and yeah. Caden Hauser and even uh, Raheem Jeter looking good out there. But again, I'm I'm a little gun shy to to talk about that. So uh, maybe I'll see a little bit with my own eyes at the end of uh, to, pr- tomorrow's practice. But mm-hmm. hearing good things. But as you saw last year, that that doesn't matter. Everybody looks good this time of year, right? Right, except for the team you're playing against, which is yourself. And so sometimes you worry about that. <laughs> yeah. But, but yeah, I, I, look it. And, and you have limitations in practice, and you have, you know, not ability to, to hit the quarterback and, and, and things like that. So it's a little bit harder to tell, but but you have to think just a philosophical change in how the offense will be run. It's just got to be a refreshing change for the team. If sure. the offense is allowed to open it up a little bit more and is allowed to try some different things. And, and look, and you have to have talent. And they have some guys that have thrown the ball – at this level before and, and even at different conferences so you know they have ability and now it's uh, just can the chemistry work it all out can the offensive line which i still think is the number one thing that you have to have uh can the offensive line have they built it where it's going to be good enough to protect and to run block and do those things to let the players make the play brian north joining us pirate radio live line north uh, what's on tap for your weekend uh, raised garden beds. It is now time to put the final soil mixture together and start planting some stuff. All right. Well, get to planting and uh, have a great weekend. Enjoy some sports and the fam and uh, and, and all the above. And uh, we'll talk to you again next week, North. Are we all Wolfpack fans going to this weekend? I had this debate earlier with no. somebody, or is that still a, a no go in Green As a sports fan. I love the underdog. As a fat guy, I love DJ Burns. Like, there's a lot to love there, Brian, but uh, not the name on the the jersey. So I would not right. say I'm a fan. Okay. Um, then again, this is a very unlikable Final Four for me. I'm not a big guy. I don't like watching Purdue play. UConn is a powerhouse. I hate rooting for the best team. 
And then, I don't know, something about Nate Oates kind of turns me off. So, like, I don't like any of these teams, to be honest with you. Yeah, nobody likes Alabama. Yet. <laughs> so, um, but there are a lot of people begrudgingly, I think, rooting for the Wolfpack this weekend. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, that's what it kind of feels like. And I wonder if NC State fans want people like <laughs> but, You know, NC State fans, angry NC State fans probably just like, screw you, we don't want your help. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, North. See you, buddy. See you, Clipper. Brian North joining us today on a Friday edition of Pirate Radio Live. We'll take a break, come back, get ready to wrap up hour number one, busy hour two with Tony Dunn and DG David Glenn. Got that on the way. More to go. Friday edition, Pirate Radio Live. Back with you after this. Here with Jeff Stein at Brown & Wood, it's a great time to buy a used vehicle. It's not a great time, it's a perfect time to buy a used car from Brown & Wood. We have over 115 used vehicles in stock, and we're number one in the market on price. We have limited lifetime powertrain on all of our used cars under 80,000 miles, so go to brownandwoodauto.com to find out more. Four brands, three generations, two rooftops, and one goal, to make sure you leave a happy customer. Come experience Greenville's newest theater, Golden Ticket Cinemas, located on Greenville Boulevard near Cracker Barrel. With stadium seating and reserved luxury recliners, you can enjoy the movie along with great concessions such as El House Sliders, delicious wings, pizza, and hot dogs. And they even have milkshakes. You can always find great deals at Golden Ticket Cinemas such as 550 Ticket Tuesdays and free family movies at 11 a.m. on Saturdays and Sundays. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show in style with luxurious amenities and top-notch service at Golden and ticket cinemas. Attention athletes and fans. Tiebreakers is looking for all-stars. Do you know an athlete who made a game-winning play, scored an amazing touchdown, or hit a huge home run? We're scouting Eastern North Carolina for this month's most outstanding athlete. Go to tiebreakersathlete.com to nominate your favorite player for the prestigious Athlete of the Month Award. Tiebreakers, shining a light on the athletes that make Eastern North Carolina proud. Submit your nomination now at tiebreakersathlete.com. Your first stop for shopping is at Shimmer Boutique. This is Ashley from Shimmer. We are fully stocked with the latest apparel, shoes, and accessories, and more. If you need gift ideas or some shopping therapy for yourself, stop by today. Looking for the hottest shoes on the market? Shimmer has the biggest selection of Hey Dudes anywhere. Shimmer has the newest Yeti products and colors. Want this year's most popular bag? Shimmer has a great selection of all your bog bag needs and accessories. Shimmer in Greenville, Winterville, and Jacksonville. Hello, Eastern North Carolina. Pitt County Schools is in the opportunity business. We open doors for every student by finding pathways to provide the best possible chance of success for each to reach their career aspirations of choice. As we head through the spring months, we will continue to guide our students for the different journeys of life preparedness before celebrating their accomplishments. We are committed to enhancing academic achievement and developing personal growth through work-based learning of our many career and technical education programs college readiness, and saluting those who will be serving our country in the armed forces, engaging, empowering, and elevating students to be successful citizens, workers, and leaders in a global economy remains our mission. Please visit our website today at pittschools.org. That's pittschools.org to learn how we grow minds and invest in our future through 38 schools and one community. Education is truly the key that unlocks doors of opportunity. While you're sleeping, our whole hogs are slow cooking over wood to create that bite that Eastern North Carolina is known for. I'm Sam Jones, and for more than three generations, my folks have been the torchbearers for what whole hog barbecue is supposed to be. At Sam Jones, you'll find plenty of smoke but no mirrors. Everything, and I mean everything, is made fresh daily, including our sides, sweets, and sauces. Come on over and see us at Sam Jones Barbecue, and I bet you'll be able to taste our passion in just one bite. Sam Jones Barbecue, Fire Tower Road. Pirate Fest, presented by Optimum, offers a full day of piratical tomfoolery for all ages. This free event includes over 125 vendors, food trucks, art demos, inflatables, and of course, pirates. Join us on Saturday, April 20th, from 11 a.m. to 8.30 p.m. for live pirate reenactments, great food, and so much more. Finish off the day with a concert at the Greenville Toyota Amphitheater from Sister Hazel with special guest Taylor Holder. For more information, visit PirateFestNC.com. It's going to be our some pirate radio the voice of the pirate nation you 
You're listening to Hour One of Pirate Radio Live. This hour is brought to you by Pirate Water. Get ready to party, pirates. Go to drinkpiratewater.com to find your new treasure. 21 and older only. Pirate Water. Why be yourself when you can be a pirate? Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Did you know that there are thousands of special needs children and adults right here in our community that love ECU athletics as much as you do? Robbie's Clubhouse is a no, uh, excuse me, local nonprofit organization that can turn your unused ECU tickets into a fun day for a family with special needs. If you can't make it to the next Pirate game, simply call 1-800-DIAL-ECU and donate and designate your tickets for Robbie's Clubhouse. If you know of a family that needs tickets to a game, call Robbie's Clubhouse at 252-916-9117. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here is Clip Rock. All right. Pirate baseball on the road this weekend at FAU. Had a great show with Dixon Williams, Jacob Jenkins Coward, and Danny Beal on Wednesday. Uh, just hours after their victory over NC State Tuesday night. And uh, the guys were fired up, ready to hit the road and uh, ready for some more conference play. Pirates swept UAB last weekend. A uh, week before, lost the series to UTSA. So a little road redemption uh, hopefully coming up. FAU on the year, 17-9. and nine. They are already 4-2 and two in league play. So uh, right there with the Pirates. And looking at what they did, uh, have done, non-conference. Uh, they did beat Vanderbilt. Man, they were up... I'm going to say we were watching that one on Friday. Blew a lead to Vanderbilt, if I'm not mistaken, but did come back and win on Saturday uh, and lost the rubber match. So they beat Vanderbilt once in a three-game series. Uh, let's see. They swept Towson, lost to UCF, lost to North Florida, won a series against Stonehill, whatever that is, uh, won two against FIU, won against uh, Miami. Uh, they have lost twice to UCF. They took two of three from Charlotte, two of three from Memphis, and actually have won two against Miami because that was their last game uh, in Boca Raton. They beat Miami three nothing on Tuesday. So while NC State was losing to North uh, to East Carolina, Miami was losing to FAU. A couple of AAC over ACC winners on uh, Tuesday night. Game one coming up six thirty tonight. Trey is Savage on the mound. It'll be. Uh, Zach Root coming up Saturday at 4, and then I saw a to-be-determined for East Carolina on Sunday. I would assume that would be Ethan Norby. And, by the way, uh, third matchup against the U coming up on Tuesday for FAU. So they got Miami kind of sandwiching uh, the bread of the ECU sandwich here uh, for FAU baseball. So that is on tap. Pirates playing well. And, Sean, if you're uh, going by Brandon Manning's model, we need to get two out of three this weekend. Definitely need to bounce back, uh, especially not the way you wanted to start conference play on the road against UTSA, and they'll have a chance to redeem themselves this weekend against FAU, who's had some pretty good wins this year. But uh, definitely need to bounce back, and two two of three would be nice, but I really want us to try to go out there and get a sweep. Back-to-back sweeps would be nice here in conference play, especially coming off a dominating win against NC State on Tuesday. Do you have a East Carolina offensive pick to click for the weekend? Um, I think uh, – give me Justin Wilcoxon. I okay. Think, I think he's going to continue. He had a home run the other night uh, in Raleigh, and I think uh, I've been waiting for him to kind of – uh, kind of catch fire, and I think maybe the spark started to fly in, on Tuesday in Raleigh, and so hopefully that continues this weekend. But uh, look for Justin Wilcoxon to have a huge weekend up in or down in Boca Raton. Great to see both catchers make an impact. Ryan McChrystal chipping in. Yeah, we got two really good ones, don't we? Ryan McChrystal and Justin Wilcoxon, both uh, great behind the plate, and obviously both of them are uh, can rake um, – at the plate uh, hitting. So, yeah, whoever's back there, I have confidence in, whether that's Justin Wilcoxon or Ryan McChrystal. But, yeah, I'm going to continue to uh, say that Justin Wilcoxon will have a big weekend for the Pirates this weekend offensively. I think I'm going to go with the shaven one, Jacob Jenkins Coward. He's due. I mean, he's had – I mean, and when I say he's due, I mean – Due for a big – A bomb. A bomb. Yeah, I haven't seen a bomb from him in a while. I think only four home runs on the year. I uh, haven't seen one in a, in a couple of weeks, but – and I've been saying that. I, I feel like I, when I go up in the stands at Clark LeClaire Stadium and I'm sitting with that, uh, either like Brandon Manning or uh, Blair Bagley or somebody, I'm like, hey, JC's due. He's due for one. And maybe he can get one this weekend. 
all right uh hoping the pirates can get some wins this weekend and then they'll be busy next week two midweek games coming up at home tuesday and wednesday yeah very bu- uh, busy week next week uh with your two midweek games and then your your three games on the weekend but before you move on to next week i did want to mention that you know looking for tonight uh can Trey savage have a better start than he did at utsa because that was very concerning from him uh in the first uh, away game in the conference and so uh, he's also uh, not just the Pirates looking to bounce back this weekend, but Trey Savage is looking to redeem himself on the bump uh, on the road uh, starting tonight at 630. All right, we'll uh, take a break. We'll come back. Tony Dunn uh, will join us. C3 Podcast. We'll talk NFL news and notes. Some Panthers news today as uh, we get a look at the future of the Panthers, what they may look like. They're D- going to try to remain stout defensively. DB. No, not Danny Bill. Old Big Derek Brown. Derek Brown will be a Panther for a while. We'll take a timeout, come back, hour two on tap, along with Tony Dunn, DG, David Glenn will join us as well. And we hope you do. Back with you after this. Greenville's hometown pizzeria is Cuccinella's. Cuccinella's has two locations with great options for lunch, dinner, takeout, and they now offer catering. Dine in for lunch with a slice, salad, and a drink with a friend, or stop by after work and grab a beer or glass of wine while you wait for your to-go order. The best pizza, grinders, salads, and homemade Italian ice is at Cuccinella's. Cuccinella's Midtown across from Best Buy, downtown across from Sup Dogs, and on Facebook and Instagram. Cuccinella's, serving handcrafted pizza since 1932. Come taste the difference. Spring is in the air at your CBD store. Get 10% off any purchase. Just mention the code SPRING. If you struggle with sleep, anxiety, or pain, their CBD wellness specialist can help. Your CBD store's unique boutique also carries THCA flower and pre-rolls, Delta gummies, pet products, gifts, jewelry, and more. Call ahead for pickup at 999-5127. So spring on over to your CBD store today. Open Monday through Saturday from 11 to 7. Your CBD store, 420 East Arlington Boulevard in Greenville. Go Pirates! Worth Chiropractic is your local choice for chiropractic care. Automobile accident, they'll specialize in treating automobile accidents and slip and falls while working closely with your attorney. Every day, back and neck pains or sports related injuries they offer safe natural care to get you back to being you no drugs or surgery so it's convenient comfortable and cost effective and the first consult is free worth chiropractic two convenient locations on arlington boulevard free consultations and they'll work with your lawyer and file your insurance call 1-800-BACK-DOC today washington's favorite place to eat and where all the locals go is down on main street down on main street's famous weekday lunch specials are only 7.99 stop by for the house salad with grilled chicken, the half club sandwich with chips, or everyone's favorite, the fried shrimp plate. After work, Down on Main Street is the perfect spot for dinner and a drink on the patio. Join Down on Main Street every Wednesday for half price wings from four to close. Down on Main Street on Main Street in historic downtown Washington. Go Pirates! Country music artist and comedian Rodney Carrington is coming May 4th to Weldon Mills Theater, Eastern North Carolina's best entertainment venue. Conveniently located just off I-95 in Roanoke Rapids, Weldon Mills Theater offers a hassle-free entertainment experience with free parking, wallet-friendly concessions, and a cozy atmosphere. With comfortable seating throughout the venue, there isn't a bad seat in the house. Join Weldon Mills Theater for a memorable event where you can relax and make lasting memories. Get your tickets for Rodney Carrington on May 4th at Weldon millstheater.com The weather is beautiful and our screen door shouts welcome. Russell's Clothing is loaded with beautiful spring merchandise for men and women. The collection of dresses is amazing. You'll find dress or casual and accessories to complete any outfit. Our men's slacks and assorted sportswear can take you anywhere. Our personal service and our free signature gift wrap make shopping easy. Make Russell's in downtown Washington your shopping destination because at Russell's, it's all about you, our pirate friends and customers. The wait is over. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of NASCAR, is now live in North Carolina. You can legally bet on all your favorite sports anytime, anywhere, right here in North Carolina with DraftKings. For a limited time, new customers who sign up with the promo code PIRATE and bet $5 will receive $200 instantly in bonus bets. 
DraftKings has the best features, including same-game parlays, player props, and more, with fast and easy payouts right at your fingertips. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using the code PIRATE and bet $5 to get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the code PIRATE. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. NASCAR is not a sponsor of this promotion and is used under license. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington. <laughs> You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour is brought to you by Country Mart. Country Mart is open every day and has two locations, in Bethel on Highway 11 and in Stokes on Highway 903. Country Mart, fueling you up with great food and your engines with great gasoline. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Washington's favorite place to eat and where all the locals go is down on Main Street. Down on Main Street's famous weekday lunch specials are only $7.99. You can stop by for the house salad with grilled chicken, the half club sandwich, with chips or everyone's favorite the fried shrimp plate after work it's the perfect spot for dinner and drinks on the patio and you can join on excuse me down on main every wednesday for half price wings for 4 p.m to close down on main street on main street in historic downtown washington now let's head back in to prl here's clip back with you pirate radio live watching the yankees blue jays uh, the Blue Jays up 3 nothing in the ninth inning. And our guest, Tony Dunn, commenting uh, just what what a sweet life it is to <laughs> get paid millions upon I mean, millions. I uh, and bat, and bat one, it, So Judge is batting 130? Because I know Stanton is. 172. Okay. And then well, Stanton's batting less than 130 now. <laughs> but... Look on the bright side. The game's about over. You get the rest of Friday off. Uh, yeah. You've got billions of dollars. You got $444 million more to spend. Yeah. So, uh, not a bad life. Look at that. Oh for <laughs> Everybody over <Oprah> today. <laughs> yeah. Been a rough one for the Yankees. Yeah. They are about to be shut out unless they can score here in the ninth inning. All right. Uh, Tony, long time no see. How you been? I am doing well, man. I'm glad to be back hanging out with you. Now's a good time to not have you on the show because it is uh, a dead period pretty much. I know. I was wondering if I was like kept checking my phone to see if Clip was like, you know, I got a lot of guests. Just take the day <laughs> off. Go well, ahead. you're 0 for 4 today. We got Panthers news, though. Yeah, We've so. got Derek Brown agreeing to a four-year deal. Uh, ninety-six million dollar deal that includes sixty-three plus guaranteed, which that to me implies like it's almost a fully guaranteed contract. Because if you what is sixty-six divided by four is what like seventeen million, eighteen million a year? Is that right? You want me to do math? Sixty-eight divided by four would be seventeen. Seventeen. Okay, so I was right. I was yeah. close. So you get seven. You know they're going to divide up that over the four years you know i feel like you're just going to end up probably keeping them all four years so um, i get the full contract which is kind of cool you were trying to spin a positive i feel like last time we talked to you about the panthers plan you yep. say at least we have a plan we got a plan is this this was part of the plan this is part of the plan <laughs> okay uh you and you like Derek brown i do i do i mean it's uh you know the panthers you know, he's one. He plays one of those positions that is doesn't. It's not very glamorous. You know, it doesn't show up on the stat sheet a lot. It doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. You know, make the highlight reel a lot. But I kind of learned this when we had Star Latulale and K K uh, K K Short. Um, I was a big fan of uh, K K Short. Like I loved him, and he was a disruptor, and he was really good. But it was. He was really good a lot of times because the guy beside him was also really good. Right. And so, you know, Star was doing a lot of things that just, you know, don't, I guess, create a lot of buzz. And that's what Derek, that, you know, that's the type of player Derek Brown is. I feel like until Aaron Donald, no defensive tackle really created buzz. Now we have two that do it. Chris Jones. Yeah. Chris Jones. Yeah. Does, I mean, he is 
every, every bit as disruptive. So, and honestly, the best you know defensive players. Well, we had uh, we did have one. We had the um, who was it? Is uh, Cam called him uh, Kong, Donkey Kong? Uh, oh, uh, Donkey Kong, uh, Sue. 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 Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I almost feel like he was known more for his post play antics than he was like his dirty during like the play choking antics. people um chandler i guess you're not going to argue with this contract no absolutely not i mean i think he's uh i mean Derek brown definitely is a disruptor up there and i think when you look at the defensive side of the ball now and you look all right who's that guy that can we can rally around i think the guy, that guy is the guy that we signed today Derek brown i think we also learned some things from dealing with the brian burns contract situation you learned from that didn't you yeah. or, or we did yeah, yeah. and um, you know dan morgan's sitting there going look we don't want to get into this fifth year option deep in the fifth year option and have this kind of anxiety or, you know animosity start to create and then we also don't want to have to get backed into a corner either way you know so is i mean and this you get ahead of this you get a kind of you beat the inflation of positions a lot of times because you signed them a year earlier than you really right. had to yeah so, um, and I, I think this is like, I mean, it's a cheaper position than the defensive end that Brian Burns was playing. So it's like, he, even if he got really good money for his position, it's still less than if we paid Brian Burns. All right. There's the, uh, the Panthers news of the day. Anything other Panthers related happened in the last couple of weeks? Um, uh, no, you know, a lot of people have been talking about the Stefan Diggs trade, though. Well, yeah, we were going to get uh, to that. And, you know, well, Panther fans, the first... The Panther, I'm sure every uh, fan base is like this, you know, but I just follow our fan base so closely. It's just like every time a player comes up, it's like, oh, man, let's get him. Let's get him. Well, Come I on. feel like Chandler's been, and Chandler probably doesn't even realize this. I think you've been obsessed Many obsessed with the player this offseason. Do you know who it is? Oh, T. Higgins. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Because, like, every team we talk about, you're like, hmm, they, you think they'll get T. Higgins? But also, you want T. Higgins in Charlotte yeah. to play for your team. He's, yeah. It's not the right. Well, it's too expensive for us. He might go to Buffalo. He could now. Especially. Yeah. I mean, they need somebody. Because we were talking about, and I'll ask you this, you know, you know, Someone's loss is someone's gain. Houston is, I mean, with C.J. Stroud and what they had last year and Nico Collins and Tank Dale adding Stephon Diggs is really going to propel them. But the thing is, is like with Buffalo, does their window close or does it get or does it get narrow? Or does it get smaller, I guess? So close or smaller? Yeah. Those are our two options. Well, you've got completely closed. It's over. It's not opening at all, you're saying? No. Well, you know, they say this is a, a deep wide receiver dra- wide receiver class. So, you know, the Bills have a lot of picks in the top 100. You know, they might be able to come out with two high-end receivers in the first two rounds if they wanted to. Um, you know, I mean, look, is is Stefan Diggs has been in the league 10 years. I wow. mean, you know, it's a, he's I think he did 5 with Minnesota and 4 with the Bills. So, I mean, this is his 10th or 11th, you know. Yeah. He he has declined over the last two years, or at least his production has, you know, and I don't know exactly why that is. He declined but, the last, like, half of last year. Yeah, it I mean, was, he just disappeared. Yeah. Um, so you got to wonder, too, is, uh, you know, are we just kind of latched onto the name a little bit too much? I, I don't think it's probably as bad as, like, we maybe like an Odell Beckham where we just hear that name and are like, oh, he's so good, you know, and we I don't know if he really is anymore. Uh, but, you know, Houston's loading up. But Houston also paid a lot for him, and not monetarily, right, because the Bills had to eat all of his guaranteed money. But they voided the last three years of his contract. I saw that, yeah. So I guess, which is kind of bizarre that they did that. I guess they, they want to make him happy. Then he gets to re- negotiate another contract. Man, this guy's getting paid. He's got, what, two big deals? He got paid by the Vikings, then got paid by the bills again um but they gave a second round pick for a one-year rental they, I'm a, I, they and i'm a little in. worried tony that they got that great culture and that great that you know, D'Amico ryan's and and cj stroud and you bring in a guy who has diva, diva tendencies who has shown he will you know blow up on the sidelines and 
even if him and Josh Allen were best buddies, which clearly they weren't, being asked about that like constantly is not great for a quarterback. I just find it bizarre that he is frustrated with Josh Allen. Yeah. You know, it's like, I mean, you played with Kirk Cousins, dude. I mean, I guess he's right, didn't he? Who was he, a quarterback nah, there? It was, he uh, was like Case Keenum through the pass, the miracle pass. Was it? Say, yeah. In the playoffs. You would think that. I mean, I don't if know. If you look around the league and you say, I got Josh Allen is the grass greener, there's only a few places where the grass is greener. Yeah, I don't know where the Did he get animosity a, comes from. It's like, man, is it because Josh Allen's the biggest name in the room now? Or is it because Josh Allen just loved to take the ball and say, I'm going to go run it. I'm going to run it. There are, I will, like, it, it might be frustrating to play with Josh Allen because he does every now and then does ridiculous stuff. But then again, like, there was a time where Stefan Diggs was nine catches a game. Like, easy. Yeah. Like, so, I don't understand yeah. where that divide came. It feels like Diggs has a tendency to do this every few years and maybe it's wise look at me and if you think of it he is going to go to a place that is got a a lot of money a lot of kind of upside because they are got that rookie quarterback that everybody believes in they're in a division that can that's winnable and now he's eligible for another contract you know, so, I mean, Diggs has done a good job of forcing himself into positive situations when it comes to, you know, and a lot of this, I don't know how much is it monetarily. And really, is is he that much of a diva or is he just kind of whiny? You what, know? What's the difference? All of the above. I don't know. I mean, like, is it is it okay to, I mean, is it that bad to complain a little? Like, it's just kind of part of it. Like, the spoiled... It's like, oh, tough day at the office. So for 4. Is it that bad? I, like, I mean, I he's don't know. a diva. It, yeah, I mean, a little bit. But, like, that's what stars are half the time. Some aren't. Some now, he's aren't. Not, he's not like Aaron Rodgers type diva. I think Aaron Rodgers is just... I don't know. Hey, you think he's a diva? Is that what you would call it? He is in a. I think he's just quirky. He's in a tension. I, he like yeah. I mean he. But that what like why are we upset with that? I'm just saying it's. I'm not upset it. about it's anything. Kind of part of I'm it, pointing you know? out that if if I was a Texans fan, I would worry about him corrupting Ruining the culture. Yeah. Well, we got Deontay been. Johnson now for the the Panthers got him and like he, and, and, he, he, that, and he had his situation hey, good news though <laughs> good news though y'all don't have a culture to ruin no that is true no so y'all are fine true I mean I don't know I mean we'll see we'll see like but, uh, how much I think Diggs though now, now now the question is is like how will he influence a young impressionable rookie quarterback like when you're you know so it's I'm not saying. so is is the diva worse because you have a guy who isn't, you know, I guess got the pedigree or the resume of like an Aaron Rodgers or something like that? Because but man, those Stroud's the star though in Houston. Nobody's like, there's nobody bigger than in Houston than him. And maybe Tank Dell and Nico and Tank Schultz, Dalton Schultz, like, Joe, Joe and Robert Mixon, Woods. They need to Joe get, Mixon, who's Joe a good Mixon. pass. Oh my gosh, Clip, tell them. In a past Joe catching? Mixon was like six years ago, dude. He's going to get a few targets and things. My point is, if Stefan Diggs gets iced out for a game or two and the freakouts begin, it's just something you don't want to deal with. I hear you. I hear you. Joe you Mixon know, is I, but all, look, all Panther, a jag. All Panther fans, a lot of Panther fans guy. are like, I wish the Panthers would have done this a second just for Stefan Diggs. Load up and get our court. Do what Houston's doing, you know. A lot of people believe that, or I saw somebody tweeting that, you know, Houston's setting a kind of a blueprint of what teams want to do, you know, is that they found that quarterback, they found that coach that <laughs> came out of, you know, and I was thinking this is like, of course that's the blueprint. Yeah. Like, I mean, <laughs> duh. You know, oh, also, let's try to get two picks in the top 
three or whatever it was they had. Why aren't we doing this? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> God. I mean, like, do you know it's when the what is it? Is it the because Patrick Mahomes sat uh, and and uh, Love sat? It's like, oh, I mean, that's what you just do. You just do, and like it's it's. I don't know. It's like yeah. of course you just draft two players, first and second, and you get a quarterback and. And you do great. <laughs> Blueprint. It's like that meme of uh, Lil Yachty and Drake where he points at the screen and he goes, oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, NFL draft is uh, when? April 25th. Yeah. So we it feels are. Feels like it's uh, early. Woohoo. Early? I, f- I don't know. I feel like it was like in the fir- May for, you know, I mean, by like two days. Uh, Chon, not a, not a draft guy. You going to uh, not this year. CWs this year? I, I'll go. Yeah. Are you doing live stuff, Tony? Even even this year? Even when we don't have a pick. You should come hang out uh, at CW's for a little while uh-huh. and then go do your show. What time does your show start? I guess that's a great question. Years. I mean, it's this is a odd. I haven't even really thought about it. It's like we've done the we started doing it in 2014. So what is this ninth? 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, yeah. 20, 21. Somewhere in there, ninth or tenth year. So I'm gonna look at it right now. And this yeah. is—I never thought about a, a moment where you wouldn't have a first-round pick. Well, your first three years, you had long waits. Kelvin Benjamin, 28; oh. Shaq Thompson, 25; oh, Vernon dude, I Butler. Was, I think one time or, I fell asleep drunk. <laughs> 17, McCaffrey at eight, and then DJ Moore, Brian Burns, Derek Brown. The JC last Horn, three years have been Ikemi quick. Bryce Young. Uh, you have had a first round pick every year since 2014. This year, you do not. So, what the hell are y'all going to do the whole time? I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I feel like we have to do it, but we, I don't know. I need to talk and figure it out. But we do have Friday. Why don't you just do We're a big show Friday. Friday. We are doing that. We have two picks in the first That's, seven yeah. picks. Yeah, maybe we just call it the C3 annual draft party and it just starts a day late. And and Friday is the day where yeah. you start to build your team. I'm starting to like it. With your new coach. Who are you taking at 33? <sighs> Guess feel, what? Clip. Tell him. I feel like I don't care. Tony doesn't know a single player I available. I don't care. Do you go Peyton Wilson if he's there? Yes. <laughs> I, th- I feel like we talked about this at AJ. I, have, yeah, I mean, I look, the defense has a ton of holes. Uh, we've got a GM that was a Pro Bowl linebacker. You got a player right down the road who is coached by arguably the greatest Panther, you know, one of the great top three greatest Panthers ever, Luke Keekley. Let's be honest, we look at history a lot, and uh, white linebackers have turned out pretty good. He's being coached <laughs> by the white genius <laughs> linebacker. So. And, and so, yeah, I mean, I and we have. I wouldn't be upset. I feel like all the Panther fans have just locked into the idea that you need to take a receiver, take a receiver, take a receiver. And if the guy's there, that is a, a you know, if a guy falls to you that you like at a wide receiver, then do it. But I don't think you should feel compelled to. You know, I like to see the draft come to you rather than you just like go chasing needs all the time. So you got number thirty three, thirty three, and thirty nine. Yeah, I mean. I guess the end of the first round will be kind of exciting because everybody's going to say, man, this guy's sliding. Is he going to be available? And you're going to have teams trying to trade with you. Yeah, You might not even pick 33. Oh, what if we... Yeah, imagine doing the show all Thursday, (laughs) then you reboot on Friday, and it's like, we've traded back. Hey, the plan you keep talking about... get a first-round pick next year. Yeah, (laughs) the plan you keep talking about is to have multiple picks in 2025, (laughs) which means you'll have none in 24. So there you go. All right, uh, Tony, you watched any NCAA tournament? Uh, a little. Yeah, a little bit. I've been watching baseball, actually. Cubs? Yeah. And yesterday, I mean, I've been dabbling on the DraftKings with it. Yeah, so I got one on the Cubs the other day. Cubs up 6-5 um, to five right now against the Dodgers. Lost on, you know, I tell you this is, folks, you really should do your research. <laughs> uh, don't gamble how I do it, which is just like, oh, let me just pick this one and pick this one and just press buttons. I picked the Mets yesterday. Minus one and a half. Thinking they were due. 
<sighs> no, I thought, man, like uh, they're they're favored. I was like, I did, and then I turned on the damn TV, and they hadn't won a game all season. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how are you? Fa- how are you favored? In oh a game? wow, they did win game two. Uh, they did. Last night. Okay. I didn't get it though. It still didn't cover. Oh, they won by one. Yeah. Oh man. But like, I was sitting there going, oh, a favorite. I mean, I'm just assuming the Mets were an actual favorite. <laughs> they were. It. They're zero and five, and the other team was five and zero. Oh. The Tigers. Yeah. yeah. Like, Baseball's whatever. weird. Like you get a pitcher, yeah, you never know day to day in baseball. All right, Tony. Well, thanks for hanging yeah, out, man. It's fun. Uh, we will talk to you next week. Joey says if we take Lad McConkey, oh yeah, people. I'm not watching football anymore. <laughs> All right. What if we drafted? Here's what the Panthers' plan is: they're going to draft uh, Peyton Wilson, Lad McConkey. And then that white corner from Purdue. And just have a completely... Remind me who Lad McConkey is. He's, Georgia wideout. Yeah, he's a Georgia wide receiver that looks like Edelman. He's like an Edelman. Lad M- McConkey is a great nickname. Man. Lad McConkey. Nickname. Lad McConkey. That's his name name. M- McHonky. Oh. <laughs> oh, well, that's what we're going to call him. <laughs> yeah. We're going to have a McHonky draft. That would have to be a cool jersey to have, McHonky. <laughs> All right, we'll take a break. When we return, DG, David Glenn, will join us pirate radio live line we'll talk final four and more back with you on a friday after this the best burgers around everyone loves a thick juicy and fresh burger Tiebreakers in Greenville, plus the all-new Tiebreakers in Winterville. Do real burgers better than anybody. So don't just go to any burger-themed restaurant chain. It's time to break the chain and eat local. Tiebreakers, real burgers at its best. Everybody loves burgers. Captain Bo Brooks, what's happening at Pirate Waters Outfitters this spring? Well, we have restocked with all new apparel from Marshware and AFCO. We got the new turtle boxes coming in, the River Rock color. And I always suggest that you cook your fish in a smithy, and the new smithy is in as well. We have a fly cave in the back with all you need to catch fish on the fly. And tie your own fly wall where we have all the accessories and products you need to tie your own flies. We are Pirate Water Outfitter on Market Street next to Break and Bread, home of Camacho Rod Work. Do you ever talk to yourself about where to eat today? And then you hear, More and hot dogs. Then you're thinking, Yeah, two hot dogs, chips, and a drink for only $6.25 would be awesome. More and hot dogs. And maybe some homemade lemonade, perhaps a pizza or a sub, and definitely an apple or peach turnover. More and hot dogs. Don't overthink where to eat today. Go to Warren's Hot Dogs in Greenville across from Ron Ayers or in Chocowinity next to the fire station. Warren's Hot Dogs, serving the Pirate Nation since 1991. Go Pirate. Pirates. UBE and PirateWare.com are proud to offer the Pirate Nation its largest inventory of ECU merchandise and tailgate supplies ever. UBE has the best prices in town, so that makes UBE your one-stop shop for all things ECU. UBE does daily restocks of Champion, Adidas, and Under Armour. Don't forget to bring your young pirates to plunder the Crow's Nest, which is the only kid's store dedicated to ECU. Plenty of free parking in Uptown Greenville. Visit them online at PirateWare.com. Go Pirates! When you walk through the doors of Villa Verde, you'll experience the sights, sounds, and smells of authentic Dominican flavors. This is Jay from Villa Verde inviting you to come by and try one of our amazing empanadas. Our famous red snappers, grouper bites, seafood paella, Cuban sandwiches, and much, much more. Relax on the patio with a fresh mojito or a cold beer while enjoying one of our out-of-this-world desserts, like our rum pineapple cake or our famous stress ledges. Villa Verde on 10th Street, a platform for good and a proud supporter of the Pirate nation and then it was two seasons. <laughs> we're here for the booty Party. pirate water is here go to drinkpiratewater.com to find pirate water in a location near you <laughs> we're going play game <laughs> pirate water is here 21 and older please drink responsibly 
It's time to save at Beauty Bar Medispa's Spring Extravaganza, April 8th through the 12th. Mark your calendar, but don't wait for the sale. Schedule your free consultation today to get the inside scoop on all the sale pricing. Your free consultation will allow you to understand your options and plan your budget so you can save on services such as Botox, filler, laser treatments, facials, skin care, and more. Schedule your free consultation and mark your calendar, April 8th through the 12th. BeautyBarMediSpa.com. This is Aaron Williams with New Blue Service Group. Our technicians stand ready to face any challenge that time or the elements may throw at your home. Your home deserves the best, and New Blue is here to help with all of your plumbing, electrical, and HVAC needs. Facing electrical issues due to the elements, we're on it. Plumbing concerns or emergencies, we're ready to fix it. HVAC struggling to keep up, we'll bring the climate back under control. So go to callnublue.com today. Go Pirates. Pirate Radio. We're not afraid of nobody. The voice of the Pirate Nation. As the son of a son of a sailor, I went out for adventure. Expanding the view of the captain and crew. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour is brought to you by Country Mart. Country Mart is open every day and has two locations, in Bethel on Highway 11 and in Stokes on Highway 903. Country Mart, fueling you up with great food and your engines with great gasoline. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Uh, UBE has been an ECU tradition for over 50 years. You can shop online anytime at piratewear.com. UBE has the biggest and best selection of ECU sportswear and accessories for pirates of all ages. Every day is game day at UBE. And Bud Light reminds pirate fans to always stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here's Clip. All righty, back with you here on a Friday edition of PRL. We've got Shirley Rhodes, got Sean, Clip Rock here, and David Glenn, DG, joining us on the Pirate Radio Live Line. Final Four weekend on tap, and NC State is a part of it. Crazy to say. David, how you doing, man? I am doing great, Clip. Good to be with you as always. We appreciate your time. And, uh, DG, I, I brought this up earlier with Brian North in hour one. Has a coach gone from basically done, basically out the door to potentially being a legend? And, uh, and again, we'll have, I, I will ask you what you think the future looks like for NC State. Is, is this sustainable at all? Is it a flash in the pan? We'll get to that in a moment. But uh, I was asking about has a coach had this kind of quick glow up uh in in history and a few people in the chat said hey dean smith was you know they, they wanted to fire him early on frank beamer yeah i remember those stories but uh this guy was basically out the door almost david and uh kevin keats is now going to be remembered forever i mean can you recall uh any coach surviving and then uh having his name in the in the bright lights like kevin keats it's certainly rare and I remember some of those stories. Another one is Mike Krzyzewski, believe it or not. There was a group called the Concerned Iron Dukes among Duke boosters in the mid-1980s because Coach K, in their eyes, had not won enough in the early 1980s where his records were pretty mediocre. And then, of course, he did break through in 1986, took that group all the way to the national championship game. Uh, And not too many years after that, of course, started winning some national championships. But... This is as severe as it gets with Kevin Keats, right? Because, remember, this was year seven. If they had not won the ACC tournament, they were going to miss the NCAA tournament. That would have meant in five of his seven years with the Wolfpack, he would have missed the big dance, which is the ultimate litmus test of this entire sport and how every coach knows he, how he, that's how he's going to be measured by his athletic director, but also by the fan base. And that's at a school clip that, as you know, has high standards for itself because – there's only 15 schools in America that have multiple NCAA titles in men's basketball. And it's easy to forget that NC State's one of those 15 because so many of the others, Duke and Carolina and UConn, et cetera, have won them more recently than 1974 and 1983, which are the two for the Wolfpack. So Kevin Keats, I believe, was traveling to Washington, D.C., knowing that, maybe not knowing his fate for sure, but knowing that there was an awful lot of pressure on states they do Boo Corrigan to fire him 
after this year seven. And now, I mean, it's as amazing a turnaround as I've ever seen, not just in the bigger picture. But remember, the Wolfpack lost seven of its last nine regular season games. <laughs> not like we saw some momentum being built late in the regular season. This has been nine straight victories out of nowhere. Nobody predicted it, at least in a documentable way. And these guys truly believe in themselves, and, and that's helped them get past to uh, some some opponents that arguably were better than the Wolfpack on paper, but are now headed home for the summer. Well, at, now we're all watching, David, and, and we all know the the legend of DJ Burns and, and, and these guys playing for State, but you were watching them when they were getting swept by Syracuse in the regular season, getting swept by Pitt in the regular season, that four-game losing streak, which, you know, they, they give up 90 to Florida State in a loss. And, uh, of course, Duke and, and North Carolina in that four-game losing streak as well. Um, what is this team looking like now compared to, to, to that stretch you talked about, that losing stretch at the end of the regular season? What have they done differently? How in the world is, is every shot the opposing team taking not going in? We saw it with Marquette. We saw it with Duke. We've seen it a lot of times here. Where they've had some open looks, and, and they're just not falling. There's got to be a luck factor here to this, too. But what, what, what is this team doing differently now they weren't doing during the regular season? Yeah, a couple things are easy to explain. One thing's a little murkier and hard to explain. Uh, number one, if you look at their five-man starting lineup right now, point guard Michael O'Connell was not starting earlier this year. There were games he only played a dozen minutes or 15 minutes. And he's not a big numbers guy, but everything works better when he's in the game. He's looking for his teammates. He wants to distribute. He's a good ball handler. If they dare him to shoot the three, he will take it. But that's a guy who was a down-the-bench player who's, who's been for a while now the starting point guard. Mo Diara in their starting five was also just kind of a complimentary player for the first half of this season. He's 6'10 or so. He can hit a three occasionally. He blocks shots. So whereas the Wolfpack had had some bad stretches defensively, Diara, you know, because D.J. Burns, while six foot nine, an amazingly creative offensive player, he's not a great defender down low. So Diara's insertion to the starting lineup and, and the point guard O'Connell's insertion in the starting lineup just made the chemistry work better, made the offensive uh, distribution of the basketball work better, made that defensive element work better that I just described. Um, so that's just an X and O Kevin Keats personnel change that matters a lot. The, the second thing is, I'm telling you, I've seen with my own eyes, these guys in this stretch – you know, they know it's one and done, right? They knew that the ACC tournament, they know that in the NCAA tournament like everybody else. They're just playing with infinitely more passion and intensity and yeah. focus on the defensive end of the floor. And offensively, they're just taking smarter shots. They're, they're not worried about anybody's statistics the way at times I thought they were during the regular season. So that helps everybody's chemistry. You know, if you don't care who gets the credit, it's amazing what you can accomplish, as an old saying goes. And then the last thing is just the free spirit, man. When you're playing with house money and you're not supposed to win, if you watched State beat Marquette, those Marquette players looked like they were playing with the weight of the world on their shoulders as a number two seed. If you watched Duke lose to State, those guys were barking at the referees, snapping at each other, their own teammates, snapping at their own bench because they felt the burden of the moment. The Wolfpack, if there's a bad call, D.J. Burns laughs it off. You know, if they get down six, they shrug it off. When their opponent gets down six, they start stressing out. So it's hard to define that free spirit element, but I think it's become a huge part, along with those X and O issues, of what the Wolfpack is doing right now that it wasn't doing nearly as well for a long time. Well, their opponent uh, was uh, coming up has certainly, you would think, been playing tight, although they've been playing great. Purdue, uh, with all of the struggles, of course, we know about losing to a 16 seed, but there's a 15 seed loss in there, uh, DG. There is a 12 seed loss in there. So um, they now advance to the Final Four, Matt Painter. I wonder if, if they are now playing a little loose if that tightness is gone from purdue either way uh they have been phenomenal and the story is zach Eady, how you defend them how you don't get in foul trouble i'm sure uh, kevin keats has been asked about that a lot this week burns diara as well 
that is obviously going to be a major factor for this matchup. Have you you tried to play this game in your brain, David, and say how can State hang with mm. Purdue and Edie and, and keep these guys on the floor and playing when every other team, you saw it with Tennessee, good grief, so much foul trouble piles up for the opponent. Yeah, I, I've I've dissected, you know, for example, Purdue's four losses. When you're 33 and four, you're pretty darn good. But it's at least worth exploring what went wrong in your four losses. And to make a long story short, a couple teams just shot the lights out yeah. against Purdue. I mean, it's hard to make you know more than half of your three pointers. I think Northwestern did that in beating Purdue during the regular season. Um, Ohio State, which was not great this year, uh, they fired their coach. Remember, at midseason, they were one of the only teams that got a lot of turnovers and a lot of fast break buckets against Purdue, and that's how they upset them in Columbus. That game was if the seven foot four guy and his teammates can't get back on defense. Obviously, they can't play that elite level defense. Uh, but the Buckeyes, I think, were the only ones that scored you know twenty plus fast break points against the Boilermakers in that upset. And then Wisconsin in the Big Ten tournament did a little bit of a combination of those things. But it's you, you better take care of the ball. Nobody who's beaten Purdue turns the ball over very much. I think Northwestern had three turnovers in the entire game, which is almost impossible to pull off. But at the very least, the Wolfpack and Kevin Keats has said that when he's asked what is the biggest dramatic change, he says it's minimizing self-inflicted wounds. You know, yeah. words, you turn the ball over sometimes, but but when you throw it into the stands, that's not a forced turnover. That's that's a, 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 a that's an on you turnover. So minimize your own mistakes. Try to get some turnovers and easy buckets, and then hope you hit some threes. And then <laughs> defending Edie, man, I don't think DJ Burns is going to be great at defending Zach Edie. So it's going to be a little Mo Diara. It's going to be a little Ben Middlebrooks off the bench. You know, there's 15 fouls to give total. It's among those three guys, but it's not going to be easy. Purdue's 33 and four in the Big Ten regular season champion for a reason. I do think if the Wolfpack gets up early, maybe the Boilermakers feel some game pressure because they're the favorite. They're the 10 point favorite. They're supposed to win. Uh, and they won a national title for Zach Eady. So maybe they do feel that pressure. Um, and that's why I think it's really important for the Wolfpack to get off to a good start on Saturday night. David Glenn joining us. David, I, I trust me, I do my best to enjoy the moment and uh, and and take it all in what we're experiencing right now. But you know, three hours a day, you've experienced this quite a bit uh, on the David Glenn show on the airwaves and now on uh, YouTube. That we tend to talk uh, other topics and look down the road. And that came up earlier this week. Someone, uh, I think it was one of our interns, asked, you know, does NC State? What do they look like next year? And with all the grad transfers in their lineup and the world of college basketball, um, that is that's kind of an unknown, right? So, what do you, looking beyond this run they're on? What is the story of the future for Kevin Keats and the Wolfpack? Are they a tournament mainstay? Are they a fringe team? You know, do, do you even have an answer for that, or is it is it uh, all to be determined at this point? I think it's really hard to answer. I will mention that one of the interesting tidbits, two two quick things on this year's Wolfpack team. One, I believe, I know they're the only ACC champion in 71 years that just won the ACC title with a seven-man rotation consisting entirely of major college transfers. <laughs> right. All seven dudes came from other schools, not a single high school signee in that top seven. I believe they're the first Final Four team ever. It's harder to research because there's so many teams. But I don't believe there's ever been a Final Four team where your top seven is all major college transfers. I mention that because Kevin Keats' roots include being the head coach at Hargrave Military Academy, a prep school in Virginia. And what was unusual about that is that he had to create a new roster every single year. It was not like being a regular high school coach when hmm. freshmen became sophomores, became juniors, became seniors. So he truly had to regenerate an entire roster every year. And, of course, what are we now in college basketball? Yeah. To immediate transfer eligibility and the transfer board, it's not quite the full 13 new guys for most of the time, but it's not at all unusual to see eight of the 13 guys you know, being brand new, as I think the Wolfpack had this year. So 
in that sense, he has a lot of practice with this way of building a roster, and I think that will serve NC State well. But I used to write an annual column clip at this time of year, early April. And I mean, five years ago, it was easy to write this column in early April because all you had lingering out there was, well, is this guy going to leave early for the NBA or is he going to stay? And, and some guys might decide to transfer. Right now, it's impossible to write that column. Like, it, it is just a complete waste of time to write, you know, an early look at the national top 25 or an early look at the, eight, you know, what will be an 18 school ACC next season. Because these coaches don't even know what their rosters are going to look like. Like, truly, some of these guys only know what three or four or five of their players who they're going to be out of 13. Now, by May 1st, they'll know a lot more because that's when the transfer window closes under the new rules. So maybe you can write that column then. But it's it's impossible to project to next year right now, much less three years from now, five years from seven, or seven years from now. I can tell you that recruits are already responding to the fact that Kevin Keith is in the Final Four sure. because one of Louisville's biggest transfers just committed to the Wolfpack. Um, I don't know if that would have happened previously. Um, But, uh, yes, he has practice in in this new world that, in a way that most other coaches just don't have that practice. Everybody is adjusting, including the heavyweight programs, who used to just rely mostly on those prep All-Americans. But but now they realize that it's still a great idea to sign prep All-Americans. But with college basketball being so much older and more experienced now, uh, you better get your fair of your, your fair share of established, proven guys from the transfer portal as well. Yeah, that, that's a great point on uh, Keats, uh, DG. That I hadn't thought of, and then who knows? Maybe you know everything is trendy, right? Maybe uh, these schools start going out to to junior colleges and say, "Hey, how do you do? How do you do it every year? Flipping your roster? Uh, we'll bring you on as a head coach or an assistant coach." And I don't know. Maybe uh, <laughs> maybe we see that start to trend in the world of college basketball. Any uh, thoughts, DG, on the other? side of the bracket you've got uh the, when you said how to beat purdue just make all your three-point shots uh alabama kind of comes to mind for that because that's what they do or at least try to do uh they are taking on the machine that is uconn who has not played a close tournament game in these last two ncaa tournaments so i, I guess the question is can bama shoot well enough to keep them in the game and and try to pull the upset and give UConn a challenge, which they have not faced in the tournament again this year or last year. I mean, Alabama has a chance because they truly have one of the most elite offenses in all of college basketball. That that has never been a question. Nate Oates has had that engine humming all season long. You saw the kid from Chapel Hill, a freshman named Jaron Stevenson, actually had a big game against the Clemson Tigers in the Elite Eight to get the Tide to the Final Four. Uh, the problem for the Tide usually has been slowing the opponent down. They just have not played great defense uh, through this season. But Mark Sears is an all-SEC guard and a really, really good guard. Uh, they have a good point guard. They have a good big man and Stevenson off the bench. Um, I don't think they'll come close to UConn. I, I picked UConn to win this men's bracket, and I picked South Carolina to stay undefeated and win the women's bracket. That's a weird year with you know UConn and NC State in both the men's and women's brackets uh, final fours. Um, so I- I'm going a little chalky with those picks, but I-, I just seen too many Huskies victories and too many Gamecocks women's victories to bet against them. David, would it surprise you more to see the NC State women in the championship uh, instead of the men uh, with the the challenge they have coming up tonight with Dawn Staley's Gamecocks? It would. Yeah. If you, if you ask me which, you know, which Cinderella story has the better chance of coming true, I would definitely take the Wolfpack bet. And and I I respect the heck out of Westmore. I mean, that guy took over a program, a school that hadn't won an ACC title in any important sport in a long, long time, and he led the Wolfpack women to I think it was three straight ACC titles not too long ago, and obviously now this Final Four. So he is an incredible coach, and that gives the Wolfpack a chance. I just think the Gamecocks, I mean, you're 36-0. You have a great coach in Staley. Uh, you're a great rebounding team, which matters a ton in women's basketball. Um, I, you know, they, they did look a little more beatable this past weekend, the Gamecocks, than they, than they have for most of the season. And they at least played some close games, so I guess you never say never. But I think I could, I could more creatively write a script 
uh, where DJ Horn and DJ Burns and, and the the the, uh, the portal pack of 2024 upsets Purdue. Uh, I'd have an easier time writing that script than how this uh, the the women's Wolfpack team is going to beat the 36 and 0 Gamecocks. The Boilers and the Portal Pack uh, going at it on Saturday. It'll be the women for NC State tonight against uh, South Carolina. DG David Glenn joining us. David, uh, man, a lot of press conferences, a lot of previews, a lot of stuff going on with the North Carolina Sports Network and the David Glenn Show. Uh, so tell the folks what you got going on. Yeah, it's it's a lot of transfer portal stuff. It's a lot of NCAA tournament stuff. A lot of interviews, uh, college sports. Our focuses are the state of North Carolina, of course, as you would guess with our name, uh, but also a lot of Atlantic Coast Conference sports, a lot of other college sports. Uh, and we've been really sending thank yous to audiences all over uh, the state and, and really the Atlantic Coast Conference footprint because just this month, Cliff, we added about 3,000 YouTube subscribers. Um, and we've had our podcast for many, many years. I've had my social media accounts for many, many years, but our YouTube account is, is basically the, the one brand new thing in the North Carolina sports network. So we don't have tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of followers the way we do in some other contexts. Um, but we, yeah, we went from 1000 to, I think 4,000 subscribers just during March madness. So as I encourage folks to check out the website, which leads you to the podcast and the video and everything else. Uh, I just want to thank everybody, including those like you who helped me spread the word. Um, 1,000 to 4,000 in, in, in one month is, is pretty amazing. So we're very thankful. And, and the website, again, is mcsportsnetwork.com. That is awesome. And uh, DG will wrap it up. Uh, this has you know, been a bit of an NC State segment. So for my Pirate Radio listeners, I will point out the only team that can beat any state, NC State in any sport right now is uh, East Carolina baseball. They did it on Tuesday. So <laughs> we finally uh, put an L on the Wolfpack there, DG. That was impressive, man. Um, uh, and I'm following ECU baseball. That's one of the things, you know, with our new uh, enterprise, what do you write about starting in mid-April? Uh, right. Obviously, the Carolina Hurricanes and the NHL will be part of that since they're headed to the playoffs. But college baseball, our state is awesome, including the ECU Pirates. Um, there, There is great college baseball across our state, and we're going to dive into that a lot uh, by interviewing the coaches and the star players. And we even have some events around the state where we bring bring barbecue from our friends at the North Carolina Port Council to, to college baseball games. So you'll be hearing more about that uh, from from our network in the coming weeks. But uh, yes, the Wolfpack has not lost many in-state games lately uh, in any sport. So congratulations to the Pirates for pulling that off. David, great to chat with you, man. Have a great weekend, and we will catch up with you again soon. Always fun, Cliff. Great to be with you. Keep up the good work. Thank you, man. You do the same. There is DG, David Glenn, joining us. Pirate Radio Live Line. Pork and baseball, and uh, my ears perked up there at the end of that uh, that segment. Chandler, uh, Bronny is entering the draft. Should the Hornets take Bronny James so then LeBron Bronny James can come to Charlotte to end his career uh would you want yes or no yes why yes not? i'm all on board yes I, I look whoever we draft's gonna stink why not just get lebron for a year and just see what happens why not? we'd make and, the hey, we make steph the playoffs <laughs> yes bring steph curry home dude steph Bronny, the big three <laughs> steph Bronny, and lebron in charlotte oh man now that's the team I could. That would make me follow the Hornets if they get all those oh guys. Oh my goodness! I mean, Seth's here. Yeah, <laughs> two Curries. It's a family affair. Two Jameses. No Steve Clifford. Did we talk about that? Yeah, we talked about it briefly. All right. Well, let's uh, take a break because that's enough talking about it. <laughs> O's have a one nothing lead over the parts. Burp. As they in the second inning, East Carolina Rays have a two-one lead over the Rockies, and they are playing slow pitch softball in Chicago. 
Cubs 9, Dodgers 7 on the Buccaneer Music Hall scoreboard presented by the Buck. The Buck, speaking of uh, slow pitch softball, how about that Virginia Carolina baseball game last night? How about it? I don't know what happened. Uh, I looked up, I got to AJ's last night. I looked, it was 11 to 4, Tar Heels. And I thought, my goodness, this game's about over. It was in the fourth inning. It ended up being 11 to 11. 11 to 11. 11 to 11. <laughs> It definitely didn't end up being 11 11. No, uh, I, I can't remember the final <laughs> score, but it was a high scoring game. Uh, I'm not leaving until you get that final score. All right, so. I got you, man. All right. Don't worry about it. I'm going to so, sit back and wait. All right. College baseball last night on the Buccaneer Music Hall scoreboard presented by the Buck. The Buck. Uh, Carolina loses to Virginia 14 to 11. North Carolina. North Carolina. Go ahead and stand up. All right. Thank you, Chan. We'll take a break. More to go after this. Baseball season is back at Granger Stadium with opening day on Friday, April 5th in the first pitch at 7 p.m. with post-game fireworks. Saturday, there will be a magnet schedule giveaway to the first 1,000 fans presented by Bojangles and WNCT Channel 9. Then a post-game Easter egg hunt on Sunday for kids and adults. Get your tickets at wooddugsbaseball.com or by calling the front office at 252-643-5305. It is the start to another fun-filled season. The Wood Ducks can't wait to see you all summer long for some Wood Ducks baseball. Go Woody. Here with Jeff Stein at Brown and Wood. It's a great time to buy a used vehicle. It's not a great time. It's a perfect time to buy a used car from Brown and Wood. We have over 115 used vehicles in stock, and we're number one in the market on price. We have limited lifetime powertrain on all of our used cars under 80,000 miles, so go to brownandwoodauto.com to find out more. Four brands, three generations, two rooftops, and one goal, to make sure you leave a happy customer. Golden Ticket Cinemas is Greenville's newest movie theater and is now open in the Greenville Grand location on Greenville Boulevard near Cracker Barrel. Experience the ultimate movie magic with their elite experience. The Elite Theater has the largest screen in Greenville, state-of-the-art 4K laser projection, immersive Dolby Atmos sound, and heated luxury recliners. And coming soon, Eastern North Carolina's only IMAX theater. Sit back, relax, and enjoy the show in style with luxurious amenities and top-notch service at Golden Ticket Cinemas. Have you ever seen those exotic aquariums like the guys do in Las Vegas on television? You ever thought about having one of these aquariums in your business? It's more affordable than you think. This is Hal Pruitt with rentafishtank.com. We can make having an aquarium in your business turnkey with no work, cleaning, or hassles for you. Rentafishtank.com creates a relaxing atmosphere and keeps children occupied. Rentafishtank.com already services many dental, pediatric, and doctor offices, plus hospitals and senior living centers. Check us out at rentafishtank.com. This is Dr. Anthony Skellick from Orthopedics East and Sports Medicine Center. Our practice has been caring for the athletes of ECU and the residents of Eastern North Carolina for more than 35 years. Whether it's treatment for your sports injury or it's time for that joint replacement, Orthopedics East provides the latest in operative and non-operative orthopedic care. We also offer on-site physical therapy and MRI services, as well as walk-in urgent care on the weekends from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Call us at 757-BONE or visit us online at orthoeast.com and go Pirates. Fitness, Fellowship, and Faith is F3 and is changing lives of men right here in your community. Just listen. Hi, my name is Kyle Allagood, 37, showboat here. Has changed my life in a lot of ways. The biggest one has been accountability, showing up here on a weekly basis, knowing that people are always going to be here to work out with me. I've just met so many people out here in Greenville that I would not have met if I would have not come out. F3ENC.com. You don't have to be great to get started, but you have to get started if you want to be great. Give me that ooey gooey, crispy, crunchy, mouth watering. Give me that creamy, dreamy, meaty, topping, pepperoni, popping. Give me that crispy, Kobe, baby, Papa John. Better get you some. Try the trio before it's gone. Hey, Pirate fans, Papa John's is the MVP move for game day or any day. Place your order online at papajohns.com and sign up for Papa Rewards. Papa John's, better ingredients, better pizza. Go Pirates! This is Brian Harris with 360 Golf Carts, Pitt County's go-to shop for all things golf carts. We have easy go, club car, and utility carts to choose from. Whether it's for the beach, riding around the neighborhood, or working in the yard, 360 Golf Carts has the perfect ride for you. If you have issues with your current cart, take it by my shop for an expert's diagnosis. 
From parts to sales to service, we have you covered. We will even deliver right to you. So come see me, Brian Harris, on Highway 43, just past D.H. Conley High School. 360 Golf Carts. Pirates supporting Pirates. This is Dixon Williams from ECU Baseball, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 2 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour is brought to you by Country Mart. Country Mart is open every day and has two locations, in Bethel on Highway 11 and in Stokes on Highway 903. Country Mart, fueling you up with great food and your engines with great gasoline. Now, back to the show. Short sack. <laughs> Welcome back. Town Insurance is your premier independent insurance agency for maximizing opportunities to minimizing risk. Town's insurance advisors offer expert professional advice to clients of all sizes. For personal or business insurance questions, call 756-8300 today. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here's Cliff. All right, DraftKings Sportsbook is available in North Carolina. Official sports betting partner of NASCAR. The wait is over, folks. You can legally bet on all your favorite sports anytime, anywhere, right here in North Carolina with DraftKings. And for a limited time, new customers who sign up with the promo code PIRATE and bet $5 will receive $200 instantly in bonus bets. DraftKings has the best features, including same-game parlays, player props, and more with fast and easy payouts right at your fingertips. Busy sports weekend with the baseball, with the women's Final Four, the men's Final Four. A lot going on. Take advantage of it with the DraftKings Sportsbook app and use the code pirate and when you bet five dollars you get two hundred dollars instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings sportsbook with the code pirate the crown is yours if you have a gambling problem call 877-718-5543 or visit more than a game.nc.gov 21 plus north carolina only terms at draftkings.com slash sportsbook slash nc nascar not a sponsor of this promotion and is used under license steve said give me a couple of props for the weekend clipper just got a bonus bet um i tried to get cute monday night and i learned something about myself i'm not cute don't get cute caitlin clark over 33 and a half caitlin clark over five and a half three pointers just go with caitlin clark go with the clark props uh let me check sir are you singing over there what are you doing i'm trying to host the show here i'm trying to uh find i gotta tell you man i love braves friday night at home i they win a lot of those games diamondbacks plus 260 is very juicy the diamondbacks are a good team i'm not gonna do it because I think the Braves are going to win. But you can get Diamondbacks plus one and a half at plus money. Just just, just something to look at. I'm trying to find Spencer Strider strikeouts. Ugh, eight and a half. It's plus money, Steve. Go for it. Eight and a half. It's plus money. What are you doing over there, man? Do you think I can't hear you? Turn your mic on. Are you, What's up? Are you singing or talking? I'm just singing. All right. Well, uh, I'm okay. Sorry. Did you save it for the break? No. No. Ooh. Dude, look. You have to understand. When I feel like singing, I have to do it. Or like I'll go crazy. All right. I'm taking Spencer Strider over strikeouts. Will you please take... I'm taking Spencer over strikeouts. He's got eight and a half. Can he get nine? Will you please put some of that money in your account, bank account? Sure. Please. Please do it. Let's take a break. We'll come back. Hour 3, Pirate Radio Live. Morgan Ayler's will join us. Mark Greenheld's will join us. Chandler, are you excited about the Masters? Oh, yeah. Are you? Mm-hmm. I'm not. I need to get excited. I need to pick a golfer or something. Maybe I'll get in the lab, find a golfer to pick. Why are you smiling like that? Nothing. I'm, just, I'm excited about the Masters. You're in a good Friday mood, aren't you? I am. Uh, dude, this beach music is getting... Beach dude. music, sun outside. I know, man. Yeah. I'm it. You're just a uh, happy fellow. I, I'm glad to see it. I like yes, sir. I like people being happy. We'll take a break. Hour three on tap. Back with you after this. But this is looking for good home cooking. 
girl's got a nasty good look And Caroline knows where you ought to be Give it up, y'all! We gon' sing! Country Mart has been locally owned and operated for over 40 years and is your premier country store serving the best cheese biscuits and country food around. Country Mart is open every day and has two locations in Bethel on Highway 11 and in Stokes on Highway 903. Both Country Mart locations are top of the line fuel stations serving shell gas including 93 ethanol free high octane gas which is the best for all you boat owners. Country Mart fueling you up with great food in your engines with great gasoline. Go Pirates! I'm back, and so glad to be back in the town that I love, but also glad to be back with the best chiropractor anywhere. Worth Chiropractic was my choice before I left Greenville, and my travels have not changed my mind. No one offers the care or service like Worth Chiropractic. Neck pain, back pain, and of course, sports-related injuries, they will get you back to being you, naturally and safely. Worth Chiropractic, two convenient locations on Arlington Boulevard. Free consultations, and they'll work with your lawyer and file your insurance. Call 1-800-BACK-DOC today. This is Talbot Green with Integrity Home Mortgage. Are you ready and pre-approved if the home you want to purchase comes for sale today? This is a very important step when trying to purchase a home in the current market. Integrity Home Mortgage offers a wide variety of loan programs. Our team of Talbot Green, Braxton Green, and Joanne Weir has over 50 years of experience and is committed to providing you with the superior customer service you deserve. To get started, call me, Joanne Weir, at 531-1148. Joanne Weir, and MLS, 75974. For purposes only, Integrity Home Works Corporation is an equal housing lender, NMLS 208516. For years, Gally Ann Phelps has been singing about Phelps Chevrolet. Phelps Chevrolet is the one for you. Low, low prices, service too. See the big dealer right away. Carolina's finest, Phelps Chevrolet. And you'll agree with what Skyler Phelps has to say. Nobody beats Phelps Chevrolet's prices. Nobody. The name you can depend on. Get you on. The wait is over. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of NASCAR, is now live in North Carolina. You can legally bet on all your favorite sports anytime, anywhere, right here in North Carolina with DraftKings. For a limited time, new customers who sign up with the promo code PIRATE and bet $5 will receive $200 instantly in bonus bets. DraftKings has the best features, including same-game parlays, player props, and more, with fast and easy payouts right at your fingertips. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using the code PIRATE and bet $5 to get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the code PIRATE. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. NASCAR is not a sponsor of this promotion and is used under license. Turkey, ham, bacon, these and other meats are great around the holidays and every other day, but they all leave behind grease when you cook them, and grease is a real pain in the drain. When you pour grease down a drain, it cools and can clog sewer lines. That can lead to sewer spills, which are messy, bad for the environment, and and can also be expensive. Never pour grease down the drain. Instead, collect it in a container like a used soup can or jar. Let it cool and throw it away in the trash. Together, we can protect our sewer system and the environment. For more information, go to GUC.com. This is your What's New update brought to you by Green Auto World. What's new? Green Auto World has new owners and is part of the DriveHereNow.com team of dealerships. New owner Tommy Cook and his team have four dealerships with a fully stocked inventory, over 200 SUVs, trucks, cars, and over 50 lenders and has financing for anybody. Get shopping today at DriveHereNow.com. Green Auto World, Highway 43 at Bells Fork, across from Speedway. Pirates supporting pirates. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930 at 104.1 FM Washington.
you're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Tiebreakers is open every day at 11 a.m. and is the best place to watch your favorite sports while enjoying the best wings in town along with sandwiches, appetizers, cold beer, and more. Follow Tiebreakers on Facebook and Instagram for daily updates. Tiebreakers in Greenville at Bells Fork, in downtown Winterville on Railroad Street, and on Greenville Boulevard in the old Pizza Inn location. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here's Clip. Y'all like Tiebreakers. I like Tiebreakers. Morgan, everybody loves burgers. Morgan Aylers likes Tiebreakers as well. And he joins us on the Pirate Radio Live Line. Morgan, how you doing, sir? What's up, ladies and gentlemen? How we doing on a beautiful Friday? You gonna love this weather, huh? Fantastic, Morgan. How many uh, correct Final Four teams did you get? Uh, I know I got Purdue and UConn, so huh? I don't know if I got any more. Who else is playing? That would put you uh, ahead of me because I only got one of those Final Four teams, and uh, the other teams playing more. And you hadn't heard of that team from Raleigh that's uh, made a run here in this tournament? Yeah, uh, yeah, North Carolina Central. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, one of them. And it's fun to watch, haven't it? <laughs> I know. It's uh game fan, but yeah. fun team to watch. Yeah, and then DJ Burns is uh the main catalyst for that and the moves he makes, uh, Morgan and the, the soft touch, it's just uh I gotta admit, if he was wearing another jersey, he could be he'd be my favorite player uh in college basketball right now. Uh but he is a lot of fun to watch in the post. He he really is, and what a matchup that's that's going to be with him and, and a big boy from Purdue, Zach Eady. And, um, you know, the thing about Zach Eady, he's 7'4", I don't know if he weighs 280, 290, 300 pounds, whatever it is. But when he when he sets up and he starts trying to get position in the lane, he takes up like three spaces. Yeah, He's huge, and it's going to be a, a really interesting matchup. And I really think the key to that, that whole game tomorrow night is going to be how the officials call that basketball game. If they call it and let them play a little bit, it's going to, you know, it could be really fun to watch. If they call a lot of ticky tack fouls, uh, it could be a really disappointing game for a lot of folks. So, you know, it's going to be very interesting, but I think that's going to be one of the big keys in that game. Hey, Morgan, you've seen a ton of seven footers, you know, come to Minji's Coliseum or, or on the television who just are not used to their bodies, can't figure it out. They can't, you know, just play the game of basketball. They're there because they're tall, and the coaches hope they could kind of grow into it and and become a good player. But Zach Eady impresses me so much with a lot of things he does on the court, and, and one of those is free throws. And I think it was Coach Mack uh, earlier in the week who said, look at his numbers, you know, inside of two or three minutes, his free throw percentage goes up even more. So to be that impressive, it's not a hack-a-shack situation – you, they're not trying to foul Zach Eady. They just do because they can't do anything else with him. He, he's, I'm telling you, he's so big, obviously. And what I like about him is that the fact that when he gets close to the basket, it's not if he if he can dunk it, he's going to dunk it. But he's not afraid to use the little the old school George Mike and little flip hook shot like Kareem used to. Not necessarily running sky hook, but just a jump hook. And when he does that, he's pretty deadly with it. As is DJ Burns. Yeah, you know DJ Burns has got those soft little shots around the basket that you don't really expect from somebody that big, and um, you know it's it's going to be fun to watch. I'm really excited about watching it, and I know you got a lot of NC State fans around here, and there's some folks that it tickled me online. People, you know, pirate fans, how can you cheer for NC State? Hey, it's a good story. You know, this was a team that they were going if if they didn't win one or two games in the ACC tournament, Kevin Keats was gone. And now he's got like a 27-year extension because he's been winning ever since then. And you know, he's made a lot of money. And, and NC State definitely is the Cinderella story this year, where, whether it continues or not, who knows. Morgan Ayler's joining us. Morgan, I think there's, there's probably some Pirate fans who are wondering how they feel about Tristan Newton being in this situation. I, I'm pulling for the guy just because he, he was a nice guy. He played... Uh, as hard as he could here for East Carolina. I wish he was still here, but he's not. He's uh, winning one championship, maybe two, with UConn. And uh, I think the majority of Pirate fans are are uh, hoping Tristan Newton cuts down the nets again. But, man, uh, what what a story. He's I never expected he would be this prominent and, and really 
one of the main things that makes this Yukon machine go, but, but that is the case. You know, he really started blossoming the, the second half of his final season here at East Carolina. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was always a good shooter. You know, he could shoot from a long way, but I think when Dooley's last year before, you know, he transferred and Suggs transferred and Von Small transferred, a lot of those guys did. But Tristan really started developing as a player, you know, just on the court, offensively, defensively, passing the basketball, really running the point. And that's carried on to his career at UConn. I hated to see him go, um, as do you know all those guys that that, that left because you know the what ifs uh, it goes back and you know look the what ifs of what could be a pirate basketball right now. You know there's a lot of good players that left, um, but you know I'm pulling for him. I've been following him all year, and he's had a really good year, and you can still see he's having fun out there, and that's what counts. Morgan Ayler is joining us, Pirate Radio Live Line. Boy, we got uh, some work to do here this offseason with ECU basketball, Morgan, as uh, the revolving door has not yet revolved and any Pirates coming here, uh, anybody from the portal coming here, but it certainly has revolved the opposite way. Brandon Johnson uh, going to Miami. Ezra Zar announces he's leaving, along with Jaden Walker, Bobby Pettiford, uh, Valentino Pinedo, Caleb LeCount. Did I get everybody? There might be some more names out there as well. But Bourgeois. Uh, bourgeois. Thank you, sir. Uh, but R.J. Felton kind of looking around and Cam Hayes saying, where did everybody go? Um, huge offseason, important for Mike Schwartz heading into year three. But now uh, it's kind of become urgent, Morgan, just to, to get some talent in here and to try to put something together the way Kevin Keats did. As David Glenn pointed out, uh, his seven-man rotation is all Division One transfers. So it's happening all around the country. Mike Schwartz going to have to do the best he can to, to get some talent on this team. Yeah, you know, there's a lot of talent. I mean, I heard the other day I was listening to a national show and they were talking about twelve to 1,300 players expected in the portal. Twelve to 1,300 basketball players <laughs> in, in the portal. Yeah. That's just phenomenal, crazy number. But you've got to be able to get guys to come in here that, that, you know, you've got the opportunity to, hey, you can come in and play right now. You know, there's no, there's not a lot. I think RJ and, and maybe Cam, the only two locks on this team. And, you know, you've got Sierra Malonga. And then, uh, uh, again, the new guy that came in midseason and his name escaped. Vungo. Vungo. Yeah, yeah Vungo. Um, you know, him, you know, he's in here and he looks the part. I think he's just very young and very not, doesn't have a lot of experience. I mean, he looks the part of a pretty good basketball player athletically, but you're going to have to go out and get five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 guys, <laughs> Yeah, which is crazy to think that, but you're going to have to get four or five that can come in here and play. And, you know, hopefully you don't, you don't strike out on the swings that you take, you know? Morgan Taylor's joining us. Pirate Radio Live Line. It is a basketball weekend. Baseball going on. Pirates on the road at FAU. Great win this midweek, Morgan, against NC State. And it is a football weekend. We talked to Holton Naylor's uh, earlier this week. And Holton uh, talked to his buddy, Isaiah Winstead. How about Isaiah Winstead, Morgan? Uh, a trivia answer. First player ever to catch a touchdown pass in the UFL. It's pretty awesome. Yeah, you know, I was very happy for Zay. You know, he's, he's playing well. It's funny because he know when Holton together they rented a house together in uh, arlington and they're on their way right now to st louis for the game against the battle hawks but st louis is on the way to st louis now for the game against the battle hawks which is kind of a neat deal both teams have to travel to a you know, away home game uh, but you know they're they're playing well and holton had a good week out there I talked to him for a while at length this morning and he's excited to be you know he's just doing what he can do right now and, and we're doing what they're asking him to do and um uh, I'm actually going to be flying out there early tomorrow morning, watching the game, flying back early Sunday morning. So, oh, cool! Yeah. So I'm excited about that. Get to go first time I've ever been to the dome. And are they in the old Rams Stadium, Morgan? Yes. Okay. They're in the uh, the dome in St. Louis is where they play, and um, looking forward to going out there and experiencing that for the 23 hours i'll be there well good stuff man i uh, enjoy that that's pretty cool uh morgan Ayler's joining us pirate radio live line morgan uh well i was gonna ask you what you're doing this weekend but i already know the answer to that so uh what you gonna try the local what st louis ribs or what you gonna do while you're there if i get there if i get there in time to be real honest with you i'm gonna be flying in i think at 345 and check into the hotel head to the stadium go to the game come back from the game be on a plane at 514 in the morning 
So I don't know if wow. I have any ribs or not, but you know, maybe I get some to go and just gnaw them on the plane. <laughs> Morgan, good stuff, man. Enjoy your quick trip, and uh, we'll recap it next week when we talk to you. But thanks for joining us today, man. Sounds good. If you're in Washington tonight, come on out to the Market Street Pub. I'll be playing out there at uh, 10 o'clock. There you go. D- man, this guy never rests. DJ Captain Morgan. Morgan Aylers joining us, Pirate Radio Live Line. All right, uh, we'll update some scores real quick on the Buccaneer Music Hall scoreboard presented by Dub Buck. Dub Buck. Cubs up 9-7 on the Dodgers. Uh, but they might not be done scoring yet. There are two on, nobody out in the ninth inning for L.A. as they try to come back. Uh, it is Tampa 2, Colorado 1 in the fourth inning. O's up 2 nothing on the Pirates as they play in Pittsburgh. They're in the bottom of the fourth. Padres and Giants tied at one apiece. Runners on the corners for uh, San Diego as they are tied with San Fran in the third inning on the Buccaneer Music Hall School Board presented by the Buck. The Buck. All right, you uh, want to get a break in? We'll come back. We got to get our sure. fleet feet run down. We got to hit Mark Greenheld's golf shop show. And more here on a Friday edition of Pirate Radio Live. We are back with you after these words. the best burgers around everyone loves a thick juicy and fresh burger tiebreakers in greenville plus the all-new tiebreakers in winterville do real burgers better than anybody so don't just go to any burger themed restaurant chain it's time to break the chain and eat local tiebreakers real burgers at its best everybody loves burgers Pizza just goes better with Pepsi Zero Sugar. Pizza. Thank you. But don't take our word for it. In fact, don't take any words for it. Crispy and cheesy, paired with delicious and refreshing, my mouth is watering already. Ooh, too high. Yeah, we've all been there. Every bite is better with Pepsi. The Buccaneer Music Hall is your beacon of music in the land of pirates in eastern North Carolina. Open seven days a week with live music, Monday through Wednesday, acoustic night. Thursday, we have line dancing from 7 to 9, followed by karaoke with DJ Dog. On Friday and Saturday night, enjoy the best local bands in the area. Check out Facebook and Instagram for all up-to-date information and band schedules. Y'all come get bucked up! Pest Tech wants to thank Pirate Nation for voting them the number one pest control company in eastern North Carolina. Pest Tech is a full-service pest control company, offering a complete range of indoor and outdoor pest management and extermination services. Your experience is the Pest Tech guarantee, with a promise to deliver you results while keeping you, your family, and the environment safe. Call the best of the best to get rid of your pest. 353-4760. Pest Tech, the official pest control company of Pirate Radio. The Holton Ehler Show. Why would you give your translator access to your No, we're, we're definitely, like, we got to protect our people. Like, he was taken advantage of. He's a complete victim. As Caden, not a Dodgers fan, yo, he was gambling. <laughs> <laughs> I liked that. That was good. All right. This I, is all I'm going to say. I'm going to put up this picture. Y'all trying to tell me this man ain't guilty? Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> to all the viewers watching, that is the face <laughs> of a guilty man. The Holton Ehler Show, powered by SouthernEase.com. Thursdays and Fridays at 6, right here on Pirate Radio. What's even better than going to Jimmy John's? The great taste of Jimmy John's coming to you. Check out their convenient catering bundle, including a 12-pack of half sandwiches made with fresh-baked bread, hand-sliced meats, and fresh veggies, plus two premium sides, 15 chips, and 15 desserts, all for one great price. You can also choose an a la carte option. Pick it up, or they'll set it up for you. And don't forget Jimmy John's loyalty app with a free sandwich after your first visit. Jimmy John's in Greenville and Wilson and online at jimmyjohns.com. There's a common misbelief today that to make it further, you need to push yourself. That you need to give up any joy to continue your rigid routine. Or you could try another way. Take some time to enjoy life. Like having a Michelob Ultra with friends. Because happiness is essential to living an exceptional life. Michelob Ultra. A refreshing and balanced flavor with only 2.6 cars and 95 calories. It's only worth it if you enjoy it. Enjoy responsibly. Michelob Ultra. 
proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Seared Shop House, Greenville's go-to restaurant for premium scratch-made entrees, paired with an impressive selection of wines and cocktails. Seared Shop House, whether you're celebrating an anniversary, birthday, a special night out, or just want to have the best meal in town, come see why Seared is the place where great atmosphere and great food collide. Seared is now open for lunch Monday through Friday, and be sure to stop in for the best brunch in town Saturday and Sunday. They also offer pickup and delivery. Head to SeardShopHouse.com for online ordering. This is former ECU baseball player and mayor of Greenville, PJ Connolly, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding Pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. The technicians at New Blue stand ready to face any challenge that time or the elements may throw at your home. Your home deserves the best, and New Blue is ready to help with any electrical, plumbing, and HVAC needs. New Blue also now specializes in crawl space moisture control and encapsulations, along with septic system repairs and installations. Contact them today at callnublue.com. New Blue Service Group, redefining service excellence. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here's Clip. All right, Cubbies are flying the W. Cubs knock off the Dodgers nine to seven in Wrigley today. Rays up two one on the Rockies. O's still up two nothing. Grayson Rodriguez pitching great for Baltimore today as they are beating the Pirates right now. Padres did score a run and they lead the Giants two to one in the third inning. All of those scores on the Buccaneer Music Hall scoreboard presented by the Buck. The Buck. John, I missed uh, line dancing last night. I missed line dancing last night. Uh, also, uh, ECU softball underway over at Max R. Joyner Stadium. No score. They just uh, finished the first inning. Shirley always spoils our fun with actual <laughs> news. No. <laughs> Can we have fun, please? No. Once again, <laughs> I missed down line Damn it. dance from last night. Shirley is trying the... to get him to stop singing. And uh, I just thought like, we've had a turn in there a lot. Whether it be Zach or Alex or Delaney or Brett, we hadn't had a lot of Chandler sitting in that chair, and I've kind of noticed Charlie's been in a better mood. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, but like sometimes, I think Shirley is the mom in the van who is just able to tune out Chandler for the most part. Yeah, because I tune out a lot of people actually. Chandler, it's not just Chandler, has just... been on one today. Yeah, he's definitely been on one day. And I keep looking at Shirley, and she's just, like, doing her stuff. like. And I even told Chandler during the last break, Shirley's going to whoop your, your A. <laughs> and I said, that's the way I want to go. And I think Shirley even ignored that. Like, she's just, like, in her zone. Chandler's singing dumb songs. She's just, I don't know. It's, it's funny to, to watch. Well, I will say this. I am trying to, uh, uh, we got a compute, uh, software upgrade that's causing a little bit of some uh, issues. So I'm trying you. to. Yeah, I'm trying to fix that so that everything for this weekend will run smoothly. All right. Uh, because we've got, you know, the Final Four coming up this weekend. We'll have that coverage beginning at 3 o'clock tomorrow afternoon. And then we'll have Orioles baseball for you Sunday afternoon, I think, at 3. Well, Don't quote me on that because I, I hadn't even looked at it. that they play at 135 on Sunday. So okay, I'm going to say so, it's earlier than that. Okay, so then we will uh, we will have coverage beginning at 1 o'clock. There you go. So, um, but trying to make sure all of that stuff, all my ducks are in a row. Um, and uh, so I've been kind of tuning everything out. And uh, and and that includes Chandler and his singing. His because, singing, uh, his yeah, everything yeah. Because I have doing. to, I have to focus on what I'm doing um, and make sure that everything's right. So, well, I'm pumped up because during the break, Chandler told me he's bringing something to the table, and I can't wait to see what it is. Uh, no, he, two uh, things, two things. Oh, two things. When are you bringing them? <laughs> right now on the Fleet Feet Rundown. Oh, okay. All right, bring it on, son. <laughs> bring it on. Fleet Feet Rundown brought to you by Fleet Feet. 
Locally owned and operated by ECU alum Chris Lunyon, Fleet Feet of Greenville provides solutions through one-on-one service to runners, walkers, and everyone in between those runners and walkers. They have the tools and technology to get you in the right shoe. You can go see them 207 East Arlington Boulevard in the old Gordon's Golf location. Fleet Feet, they run for you. All right. I love this. I should do this more often. All right, Jonathan. What do we got? All right. On the Fleet Feet Rundown. Of course, uh, Chance at, 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 at the end of the uh, Fleet Feet Rundown, it's the National Day Update that we do every day on the Fleet Feet Rundown. First one we have is Chan's hypothetical question. Okay, I like this. Ooh. All right. And the question is, is that you guys are a sports broadcasting team. Charlie and I? Well, no, just y- yourself. You're, you're a sports broadcaster. Okay. What is the sporting event that you would want to broadcast? You only get one. Mmm. What is that? Ooh. And it can be anyone, like, for example, and this is not my like answer. Super Bowl, I'm World t- Series, oh, okay, Game gotcha, 7, gotcha. Uh, uh, Stanley Cup, Game 7. It can be a high school basketball game if you want it to be. Well, we've already done that. That's true. We did a high school. Freshman! Yeah, yeah. Clip and I both game. did a state championship uh, game. So, I would say, like, if you're going to go big, go big. Game 7 of the World Series for me. I'm a uh, yeah. I'm a baseball lover. I, I love baseball. I've done play by play for baseball, basketball, and football. My favorite being basketball. So it would be a basketball game. It would involve East Carolina. East Carolina. Now I'd love for it to be at home in Minji's, but I want the stakes to be high. So I mean, I guess give me like a. Um, Thursday night, 7.30, round one of the NCAA tournament. The 13 seed East Carolina against the 4 seed Arkansas in Greenville, South Carolina. So, like, a lot of Pirate fans are there. Yeah. And I'm trying to call the Pirates' first ever NCAA tournament victory. Oh, wow. Okay. All right. What would be the call at the end? The, the, the buzzer sounds. ECU basketball is serious. <laughs> <laughs> the Pirates have done it. I'm being serious when I say the Pirates have done it. Unserious no more. <laughs> East Carolina advances to round two. <laughs> They'll play Sunday. Sunday, Sunday. In Greenville. That's hilarious. Are you serious? The Pirates. Wait, you said it. that ten years ago. You You've would have said, said no. That. that is that. That's it. Oh no, you said, "Are you kidding me?" Oh, I'm sorry. Damn it! I wish I'd have said, "Are you serious?" I was. I was thinking. I was like, "Wait a minute." He said that in the state championship game. No, he said, "Are you kidding me?" Why so serious? <laughs> ECU has to baseball has to be the answer for clip, right? Wrong, Jamie. Wrong again. Sorry. Why am I going to be a turd? Chandler's in such a good mood. Shirley's in a good mood. I'm in a good mood. All right, Shirley, what do you got? She what already got answered, what? dummy. Oh, what did you say? Game you seven game of the World seven. Series. I'm assuming the Red Sox are playing. Who are they playing? Oh, uh, ooh. Dodger. The Dodger. I would like to... Don't say my team. Yeah, the Dodgers. Okay, I, I, yeah, because that half, way I can half, root for half you. my team is on the Dodgers right now. Oh, yeah. I mean, you, you they took they took Mookie from us. They took um, oh gosh, that was a outfielder. Is in, Verdugo? Is, no, he's a Yankee. I was watching him earlier. Verdugo, today. yeah, he's a Yankee. Which, by the way, Verdugo without a beard is freaky looking. Freaky. I I, I, I can't. What's your answer there, Wideville? Wideville I'd probably football go the state rub, title. I'd probably go. Yeah. I'd go rubber match in a super regional for ECU baseball. To Game punch, three. Yep. Mm. To punch their ticket to Omaha. That's a good one. And what would that sound like? East Carolina has done it. They have finally seen the promised land. <laughs> they have climbed the mountaintop. All right. Sean, great, uh, great question. I like that. So let's do some more of that. All right. Well, what was your second thing? You On bring to this the day. Okay, what do you got? I see clearly. On this day in sports, 
1967. Say if you can do this in a trivia format. All right. Just so I can play. 1967. This right, NBA this star set the NBA record for 41 rebounds in a game. I guess. Uh, oh, wait. I'm going to say it's one of two. Give me. Give me. Give me Wilt Chamberlain. Yes, sir. All right. Correct. All right. Uh, well, this is not. This is going to be tough for our trivia. Not though. for me. Um, what happened on this day in 1972? Uh, okay, this is going to be tough. In Major League Baseball. Okay, Nolan Ryan threw a no hitter. No. Uh, 1972, something happened. Okay. <laughs> And <laughs> it's tough to make a question for it. Yeah, I guess. Okay, uh, oh, go the, ahead. The man. regular MLB season fails to open due to a player strike for the first time in Ooh, history. Oh, did not know. Okay, uh, eighty-six games were lost before mm. the labor dispute settled. Okay, nineteen seventy-three. This happened in NFL uh, regarding numbers. Um, in a, the NFL adopted the jersey numbering system. Mm. Example meaning quarterbacks were wore one through nineteen. Yeah. And that was done away with in 2022. Two. Yeah. Yep. In 1983, this New York Mets set record, set a record of 14th of his 14th NL opening day assignment. I'm sorry? On this day in 1983, this New York Mets set a record of, four, of 14 NL opening day assignments. This New York Mets, 1983, on this day. On this day can you tell me the position because i can only think of just a couple of mets really chandler don't know who he is he's a pitcher nolan ron no daryl strawberry tom seaver not daryl strawberry dwight gooden is who tom seaver tom seaver Tom Tom Seaver. the correct answer Uh, on this day in 1984 this nba hall of famer broke wilt chamberlain's all-time career scoring record of 31,419 points moses malone 84 scoring. Well, so it's not. He passed Wilt Chamberlain's all time career scoring record. I should know this. Because the guys at the top are like Carl Malone and Michael Jordan. They were too young. Don't think too hard about this. I'm thinking really hard, though. I should think less hard. I understand. Uh, give me his college UCLA. Oh, uh, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Yes, sir. Doy. Doy! Um, let's see here. Yeah, see? Yeah, see? 1989, this Los Angeles Dodgers pitcher um, had a consecutive scoreless streak of 59 innings, and he, that ended on this day. What year? 1989. Um, Fernando oh, Venezuela. No, no, Oral Hershiser. You are correct, sir. Uh, Oral Hershiser. I forgot about Oral. Uh, on this day in 1990, this NBA uh, Hall of Famer reached a 1,000 assist mark for NBA record three years in a row. John Stockton. On this day, you are correct. Uh, let's see. Hmm. Hmm. I have. Oh. On this day in 1987, this hockey figure wins seven straight NHL scoring title. What year? 1987. The great, the great one, Wayne Gretzky. That is correct, sir. All right, let's see here. 1991. Now we're starting to get in the wheelhouse. 1991. This Detroit Piston ends the NBA free throw streak of 62 games. You mean he made a free throw in 61 straight games or whatever? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to go Joe Dumars. That is correct, sir. Yes, sir. Wow. Yes, sir. I was, All right. th- I was thinking Bill Lambeer, but. That dude can't hit a free throw. No, I was thinking he would go to the line quite often because he attacked the basket. All right. Got some women's I mean, college that. basketball for you here. Oh, this is easy. On this day in 1992. Mm-hmm. The 11th NCAA Women's Basketball Championship was held. <laughs> this team beat this team 78 to 62. Uh, 1992. I mean, I'm going to go I will say this. Too early for Tennessee. This this guard Molly Goodenboer was uh most outstanding player. 
Louisiana Tech, are they involved? No. All right. It is a CUSA team versus Old Dominion versus a Pac-12 team. Is Old Dominion right? No. Huh. I want to say their men's made the uh, NCAA tournament this year. UConn. They're not CUSA. Oh, sorry. What? They're you. Uh, uh, just tell me. I don't know. They're the Hilltoppers of Western ah, Kentucky. Ah, they were in the champion. I never knew that, John. That's why I like this segment. Yep. Western Kentucky uh, was defeated by Pac-12 school. USC. Stanford. Of course. Yep. Nailed it. Mm-mm-mm. What else you got? Let's see. Um, We had a loss. 50, 50. Ooh, here we go. 1993. This should be up your alley clip right up my alley 1993 on this day the 55th ncaa men's basketball championship was held this school defeated this school 77 to 71 that would have been uh, and it was this school's third uh, title do we need to take a timeout because <laughs> <laughs> i'm pretty sure that was north carolina beating michigan you are correct sir okay the chris weber game that's right oh boy that's right Let's see. I'm liking this. Oh, I'm loving it. I'm loving it. And the good thing is, all the listeners have turned off, so it's just us. <laughs> <laughs> it's not that bad of a segment, is no, it? No, I like history. Uh, yesterday's history, tomorrow's a mystery. All right. In 1998, the year that Chandler Honeycutt was born, this team recorded their first win in team history with a 3-2 victory over the San Francisco Giants. Okay, 1998. So we're talking either Diamondbacks or Rays. It ends the second worst start ever by an expansion team. And they beat the Giants, so I'm going to say, using context clues, that would be the Diamondbacks. You are correct, sir. All right. You're really good at this. I'm really, really good at sports trivia. Who would have known? Who would have known? On this day in 2003, the Kansas City Royals... Never mind. (laughs) Oh, who do they beat? The Kansas City Royals become the first MLB team to begin to begin the season five and zero after losing one hundred games the previous year. They beat this team two to one. How the whoa almost cussed. <laughs> There's no way to know that. I screwed that up. I said the Kansas City Royals. Um, oh, here we go. Two thousand four on this day. Wait, 60... did we just skip over the yeah, whole thing? I guess so. Okay. That's fine. It's Cleveland Indians. Okay. Uh, 2004, the 66th NCAA Men's Basketball Championship. This team beat this team 82-73. to 73. Okay. 2004, I'm going to say, yeah, I probably got my year. Is that UConn? Mm-hmm. Who did, did they beat? Did they beat Georgia Tech? Yes. All right, Chris Bosh. All right, Shirley, you can redeem yourself with some Women's National Championship trivia here because on this day in 2005, it was the 24th NCAA Women's Basketball Championship. This team beat this team. What, beat him beat him pretty badly 84 to 62 Sophia Young was the most outstanding player what year again 2005 this team beat this team and Sophia Young was the most outstanding player in 2005 2005 UConn you gotta go UConn <laughs> I don't know who is it. or Tennessee it's gonna be UConn or Tennessee it is Big 12 versus Big 10 Baylor, Texas. Baylor? Baylor. Baylor Bears. Oh, uh, was that? No, that couldn't have and been. And they defeated this Big Ten school. That wasn't Brittany Grinders. No. Not no, I was going to say, that's too far back. Uh, they beat, of course, uh, Wisconsin. No, their men's basketball program is, has some history of success. Cool. Don't care. Move on. Michigan State. Mm. All right. Okay. I don't know how I was supposed to redeem myself. <laughs> that was a tough redeemer. Yeah, that was a, not exactly what I was here. looking for when I was looking for All redemption. Right. We got more? On this day in 2013, this Baltimore Orioles outfielder becomes the fourth player to homer in the first four games of the MLB season. <clears throat> Eighth inning grand slam propels Orioles to a 9-5 win over the Twins. What year? 2013. His I'm going to Ar- go Adam Jones. No. Okay. Orioles outfielder in 2014. Nelson Cruz played for them. No. (laughs) Orioles outfielder in 2014. Orioles outfielder. Um, Anthony Santa (laughs) there. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, You got any hints or anything? He went downhill fast. 
Um, well, it wasn't that Chris uh, Davis. He played first. Chris he? Davis. He played the outfield? Yeah, I think okay. he started his career in the outfield. All right. All right. By the way, a quick update. Uh, East Carolina up one nothing on UTSA. At a girl. Buck scoreboard presented by the Buck. All right. Who was the Minnesota manager in 2014? Ron Gardenhire. All right. There you go. <laughs> Sweet. All right. easy, I think we're about done here. All right, we're about done here. Chad said that Chris Davis played first. I agree. It says this Baltimore out. That threw me off. I would have got it. I would have got it right off the bat. I was thinking Chris Davis, but I couldn't think of his name. Crush Davis. I wanted to call him Chris Young, but uh, Chris Davis. All right, well, let's take a break. When we return, Greeny Martin, you got something else? Good job, Sean. That's a good time filler, and I love stuff like that. I don't know if listeners do. I love trivia. I love, I really love 90s, early 2000s, early to mid 2000s. Love that stuff. We'll take a break. Greeny joins us. We'll talk Masters and more when we return after this. Hey, Pirate Nation, it's Caleb with Strouds Marine. Boating season is here, and at Strouds Marine, we're stocked up with over 20,000 pre-owned parts. We've got everything you need from propellers, lower units, trim units, electrical and fuel parts, and just about anything else you need for an outboard. Speaking of outboards, we will buy your old ones. And as always, our mission is to save you money and get you back out on the water as quickly as possible. Visit StroudsMarine.com today for more information. Strouds Marine, your best source for salvaged outboard parts. Here for the booty. Party. Pirate Water is here. Go to drinkpiratewater.com to find pirate water in a location near you. We're going plankin! Pirate Water is here. 21 and older, please drink responsibly. Ahoy, Pirates! It's Lindsey Gray with Carolina Caliber. Winter ship has sailed, and it's time to spring into turkey season. Stop by, mention this ad, and we will give you a set of Primo's Pattern Turkey targets to help you get sighted in. Speaking of spring, we're cleaning house with deals you can't miss. Tune in weekly for details, and don't forget, we've got the largest selection of firearms and accessories in Eastern NC, and over 60 years of experience in helping meet your firearm needs. Shop online or come see us at Carolina Caliber on Fire Tower Road in Winterville. It's a time-honored tradition. <laughs> We are talking with the legendary Greg Lasseter, championsofgreenville.com. And I say that because very few businesses last 10 years, 20 years. You're getting ready to celebrate your 40th year at Champions Health and Fitness. This next coming July will make 40 years. I started out in Aiden with three pieces of equipment and didn't even have a bathroom for people to use. So it's come a long ways. Champions Health and Fitness. Give the address and the phone number. 4190 Bayswater Drive, Winterville, North Carolina. Our phone number is 353-0544. You can find Champions right behind the phone fire tower on fire tower road champions health and fitness the brunch is back the famous brunch buffet at fifth street hardware has a variety of breakfast and lunch items from 10 30 to 2 including an omelet station and prime rib and a special sunday cocktail menu including mimosa flights don't forget fifth street hardware has lunch specials every day along with over 40 beers on tap trivia wednesday live music every thursday night and a late night menu through the weekend Visit FifthStreetHardware.com or give them a follow on Facebook and Instagram for a weekly lineup and more. Go Pirates! Here with Jeff Stein at Brown & Wood. It's a great time to buy a used vehicle. It's not a great time. It's a perfect time to buy a used car from Brown & Wood. We have over 115 used vehicles in stock and we're number one in the market on price. We have limited lifetime powertrain on all of our used cars under 80,000 miles. So go to BrownAndWoodAuto.com to find out more. Four brands, three generations, two rooftops, and one goal to make sure you leave a happy customer. Turkey, ham, bacon, these and other meats are great around the holidays and every other day, but they all leave behind grease when you cook them, and grease is a real pain in the drain. When you pour grease down a drain, it cools and can clog sewer lines. That can lead to sewer spills, which are messy, bad for the environment, and can also be expensive. Never pour grease down the drain. Instead, collect it in a container like a used soup can or jar. Let it cool and throw it away in the trash. Together, we can protect our sewer system and the environment. For more information, go to GUC.com. 
the icy treat that can't be beat is Sparky Snowballs. From big kids to little kids, Sparky Snowballs has been making smiles happen for over 20 years. If you're not in the mood to chill out with a snowball, Sparky's funnel cakes and fried Oreos are a perfect Sparky-licious treat every time. Are you having an event, party, or fundraiser? Call Sparky's to come on site. Remember to follow Sparky's on Facebook or visit SparkySnowballs.com to see where they'll be next. This is Big John Williams, strength and conditioning coach for East Carolina football, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light. Reminding Pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. Welcome back. Country Mart has been locally owned and operated for over 40 years and is your premier country store serving the best cheese biscuits and country food around. They are open every day and have two locations in Bethel on Highway 11 and in Stokes on Highway 903. And both locations are top-of-the-line fuel stations serving shell gas, including 93 ethanol-free high-octane gas. Country Mart, fueling you up with great food and your engines with great gasoline. Now let's head back in to PRL. Here is your host, Cliff Rock. All right. We will once again head out to the Pirate Radio Live Line. Yeah, and welcome on Mark Greenhill's Golf Shop Show coming your way Saturday here on Pirate Radio. Greeny joins us now on Pirate Radio Live. Greeny, how you doing today, man? I'm doing good, Clip. How you doing? Doing good. Long time no chat. And uh, since the last time we chat, your Clemson Tigers went on a hell of a run. And uh, texting with you throughout, well, hell, t- talking to you during the season, uh, the ACC tournament, texting with you during the NCAA tournament, uh, you claim to not be watching this for the fear of if you did, the run would come to an end. So, Greeny, how much of the Elite Eight run uh, from Clemson did you watch this year? Absolutely zero minutes. <laughs> that is insane. <laughs> that is, what did you do during the games? You know, it was funny. One of the games, um, I think, to get them to the uh, to the Elite Eight, um, I – Absolutely no attention, and like one college buddy that finally texted like onto the uh, onto the elite eight. And I was like, "Oh, we won!" He's like, "Yes." I'm like, "No, I'm a jinx." And I then I started taking like, "How much do y'all want to pay me not to watch the next game?" So uh, yeah, that's pretty much how it went. Hopefully, uh, you made some money out of it. A great run by the Tigers and uh, the the Brad Brownell cycle. I guess it seems like he. His seat gets a little warm. He wins a tournament game, uh, and and the cycle continues now in a lead eight run. So you got some expectations there with Clemson basketball. Do you expect it to continue, or was this kind of a a flash in the pan? You think, Grinny? I've always felt like he was a good game coach. I felt like that their recruiting was what was holding them back. So now that you've made this run, and maybe you can start picking up a few better players that I feel like that he does a good job coaching that team. And, you know, it's always a conversation when you're at that level, kind of a middle-of-the-road team in a, in a big conference like that. It's like, who are you going to go get, right? Who's going to come coach your team yeah. if you have the success that you have and you get rid of coaches, right? I mean, it's not like they're a losing program. They've, they've just they've not won the big games. I mean, obviously, they lose to BC. They get crushed in their first tournament game in the ACC. And then they turn around and go on a run. So, I mean, they were capable of losing to anybody and beating anybody. And it took Alabama to go absolutely three-point wild to beat them. Yeah, and uh, the Crimson Tide can do that. And, man, credit to uh, Clemson in that game. Those teams were throwing some haymakers late, but Alabama uh, landed the most. How about the, the run State is on? Uh, as improbable as Clemson uh, Clemson's run was, NC State has now made it to the Final Four. And if they want to keep this going, they're going to have to beat some teams that look almost unbeatable right now. First, Purdue, and then probably UConn, who takes on that, uh, that high score in Alabama team. So, how about the Wolfpack and uh, and their chances this weekend. Yeah, you almost felt like their coach got saved as well. I mean, they were they had pretty high expectations coming into this year, and they really didn't meet those. and And I guess it's one of those things where you know they 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 won a couple of games that maybe people didn't expect them to, and they got that confidence. and Confidence is a huge thing. 
Wouldn't it be interesting if uh, they, they came back and pulled that upset and won the whole thing just like they did, you know, back in the 70s and then again in the 80s? So, you know, 10 years, 10 or 11 years apart, maybe they can do it again 10 and 11 years apart. Who knows? Mark Greenell's Golf Shop Show coming your way. We've got the Golf Shop Show kicking you off on Saturday morning. We'll have Final Four action on Pirate Radio on Saturday as well. And, Greeny, uh, we'll start talking about the Masters uh, coming up next week. And I know you, uh, just talking to you in years past, you like to say, okay, who's who's playing well right now? Who, who's in good form heading into Augusta? So who's a, a name or two you're looking at uh, that, that checks that box right now? Well, I mean, obviously, it's going to be Scotty Scheffler. I mean, uh, if he doesn't miss a, a five-foot putt on the last hole last week to go to a playoff, we might be talking about him winning three in a row. Um, seems like he's got the chance every time he goes out and plays. It's interesting. He's hitting it so good that nobody would touch him if the putting was uh, even mediocre sometimes. I mean, even last week, he had a good, um, I think, first and third round putting, a real bad second and fourth round putting, and he, he only misses the five-footer in the last hole to go to playoffs. So it's really going to come down to Scotty Scheffler at, at Augusta National. You know, does he have a bad putting round? Which we, He doesn't have four good ones, right? We expect him to have a mediocre or a bad round at least putting one time. When does that happen, and, and can he recover from it? If it happens in you know the first, second round, then he can recover in the third and fourth round. If it shows up in the third and fourth round, you know, can he recover or is he far enough ahead? So you got to always look at Scotty Scheffler when you come into Augusta National. I'm still looking at Brooks Kepka. I mean, here's a guy that when he's been healthy and playing at Augusta National, I mean, he's almost won the thing three times uh, and probably should have won it twice, you know, and maybe should have won it last year if it not for Patrick Cantlay's slow play in front of him and he let John Rahm kind of outlast him in that round. So, it's interesting that you look at it from that perspective. And, uh, you know, he won the event before at Live coming into this into the Masters, so we'll see how he does this week at Live. Yeah, Grady, you have to, to, to watch those guys as they uh, infiltrate Augusta. Are you keeping an eye at all on the, the Texas Open? Uh, I'm, I mean, I recognize some names in this field and some, some big names at that. So do you kind of watch who plays well this weekend and, and maybe carry that over to next week? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, there are tw- it's u- unusual. There are 20 of the top 50 in the world playing this week in the Valero Texas Open. Uh, Roy McIlroy uh, leading among those. Uh, as we're talking, he finished around at 200 today, 500 for the tournament. He is six back of uh, Akshay Bhatia. So um, you want to see guys getting into form. I mean, Rory's driving it very well. Uh, he-, he missed a few short putts. It didn't make a lot of bogey. And that's what we've been seeing from R- Rory. He's been making a lot of birdies, but he's been making a lot of bogeys and some doubles and some triples, making mistakes. So far this week, even though we're only at five under par, he made no bogeys yesterday in shooting three under, uh, three under par. He only made one bogey today. So maybe he has cleaned it up a little bit, and that's going to help him as he plays Augusta National. He has talked about that he gets too aggressive there, and it's a very boring played golf course you have to play boring in order to play well there and it's hard for him to do so maybe if he can clean those mistakes up he's going to be at the top of the leaderboard greeny uh your educated guesses couple of tiger questions uh number one does he play number two if so does he make the cut uh what's the the uh the latest on tiger here he played a practice round recently so we anticipate that he's going to play uh, making the cut for me, is still a tall task. I mean, Nota Begay is on record lately saying that he's talked to Tiger, and, you know, the, his ankle has zero movement in it because they fused the ankle. That was the latest surgery that he had. So, you know, the pressure of the walking has to go somewhere else. It's gone to his lower back, and that has obviously become an issue, and the back's been a repeated issue. So it's really a question of, you know, how well can he recover day to day? I think he's got to shoot you know, maybe around 70, 71, 72 in the first round for us to really see him make the weekend because it's going to be a struggle the further he goes. But it's going to be a telltale sign to me because this is a golf course that he always plays well. And if we suffer, we have more trouble, we play bad, we don't make the cut, then it, then it really might be over until we get him out of the champ tour and he can take a golf cart or is allowed to take a golf cart. And we'll see how it goes. Granny, uh, man, a lot to discuss going on in the sports world and especially the golf world. So uh, what's on tap for Saturday's edition of the Golf Shop Show? 
As always, Bill Bender in the Sporting News. We'll talk Final Four, maybe throw in a little uh, baseball, see how the seasons have kicked off. We're going to talk to Matt Ward of uh, Golf Today UK. We've got uh, Wade well, Ward Clayton to talk Masters, and we've got Sean Zach to talk uh, Masters. So there's going to be a lot of Masters talk. A uh, little bit of subtle changes that nobody talked about. They've made a few extra pin placements on some of the greens on the front nine. So we'll look for that next week as we uh, get warmed up for the Masters. Greeny, i got a lot of Red Sox fans who are in my circle, whether it be coworkers, friends, acquaintances, and all I hear about is uh, how bad they're going to do this year. Five and two starts. So I guess uh, enjoy it while you can, and who knows, maybe it'll last longer than people think. Yeah, I think they're going to have to be a team, you know. I mean, they're, they've got some pitching. It's going to have to be, you know, what can they acquire during the season and how well does the rotation hold up? I think that's going to be the key. If the rotation holds up, I mean, I think that they can, they can you know, battle for the division title. Greeny, good stuff. Uh, check out the Golf Shop Show on Saturday and talk some Masters with you next week. All right, man. Have a good one. Thanks a lot. Mark Greenhill, Golf Shop Show, joining us here on a Friday edition of Pirate Radio Live. We'll dive in to the Masters next week. Also, uh, dive into spring football in the spring game. Justin Bear, ECU Marketing, will join us on the program. And uh, we'll be out on the fields, the practice fields. Actually, Dowdy Ficklin Stadium tomorrow uh, for the scrimmage. So stay tuned for all of that on our social media accounts. And East Carolina has jumped out to a 3 nothing lead over UTSA. And uh, they are in the bottom of the third inning. Runners on the corners and Logan Sutton up to bat. All right. We'll uh, have one final update on that and tell you goodbye when we return. Pirate Radio Live here on a Friday. Back with you after this. The wait is over. DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of NASCAR, is now live in North Carolina. You can legally bet on all your favorite sports anytime, anywhere, right here in North Carolina with DraftKings. For a limited time, new customers who sign up with the promo code PIRATE and bet $5 will receive $200 instantly in bonus bets. DraftKings has the best features, including same-game parlays, player props, and more, with fast and easy payouts right at your fingertips. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now using the code PIRATE and bet $5 to get $200 instantly in bonus bets. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with the code PIRATE. The crown is yours. Gambling problem? Call 877-718-5543 or visit morethanagame.nc.gov. 21 plus, North Carolina only. Bonus bets expire 168 hours after issuance. Deposit and eligibility restrictions apply. Terms at DraftKings.com slash sportsbook slash NC. NASCAR is not a sponsor of this promotion and is used under license. All right, it's that time of year again. Let's take a look at what's going on in the Wings Over Greenville brackets. In the sauce region, we have the top-seeded Honey Barbecue getting the win over Hot Garlic. In the Wings region, Tenders defeats Traditional in a nail-biter. In the Sandwich region, the Chicken Bacon and Ranch Wrap knocks off the Buffalo Chicken Sandwich. And who will win the greatest rivalry of them all? Ranch versus Blue Cheese. You decide. Try them out for yourself. Give them a call today at 758-9464 or place your order online at wingsover.com. Southern Knees has arrived, Pirate Nation. Whether you savor the bourbon flavor or indulge in other delightful options, Southern Knees gummies are here to elevate your moments. And here's the best part. You can enjoy them with an exclusive discount. Head over to southernease.com now and use the code PIRATE at checkout for a fantastic 25% off your first order. At Southern Ease, you can be living life to your fullest, one sweet moment at a time. Southernease.com. This is Aaron Williams with New Blue Service Group. People have been asking, what's new at New Blue? And I'm always glad to tell them that we now specialize in crawl space moisture control and encapsulations, along with septic system repairs and installations. As always, we offer plumbing, electrical, and HVAC, all while redefining service excellence. So go ahead, contact us at callnewblue.com. That's callnublue.com. Go Pirates! 
This is Holt Nailers for my friends at Anson Belts, the belts that I wear. Go to AnsonBelt.com to find micro-adjustable holeless belts with over 30 plus options of a quarter inch apart instead of your typical five holes one inch apart, always giving you the perfect fit every time. If your waist fluctuates, Anson Belt is great because you can always find the perfect fit any time of the year. AnsonBelt.com, over 10,000 combinations to choose from, a belt for every occasion, and the official belt of the Holt Nailer Show. Want a great lunch with quick service? Huckleburger. Need a place to dine out with the family tonight? Huckleburger. The fastest full service restaurant in town. Huckleburger. Huckleburger is committed to three core values. Highest level of customer service, high quality delicious food, and lightning speed. The Huckleburger menu features delicious burgers, cheesesteaks, chicken sandwiches, black bean burgers, salads, and much more. Huckleburger in Greenville near Lowe's on Memorial Drive and off of 15th Street near the movie theater in Washington. Huckleburger. Delicious, fast, fresh, and friendly. Yard Gnomes Baseball is here. The Greenville Yard Gnomes offer summer fun with your family and friends at an affordable price. Catch every game at historic Guy Smith Stadium and enjoy great food from area food trucks, cold beverages, and exciting baseball action. Single game tickets start as low as $10 and mini plans as low as $48. Visit YardGnomesBaseball.com to get your tickets and Yard Gnomes swag. Come out and hang with your gnomies this summer with the Greenville Yard Gnomes. This is Josh Moylan, and you're listening to Pirate Radio, the voice of the Pirate Nation. You're listening to Hour 3 of Pirate Radio Live. This hour of PRL is brought to you by Bud Light, reminding pirate fans to stay in the game and drink responsibly. Bud Light, the official beer of the ECU Pirates and proudly distributed by Carolina Eagle Distributing since 1989. Now, back to the show. And welcome back. It was a good day for the stock market. It was uh, The Dow was up 307 points at 38,904. The NASDAQ was up 199 points at 16,248. The S&P was ahead 57 at 5204. That is a look at your uh, Wells Fargo Advisor Stock Market Report. For a personal look into investing, call 756-6900 in Greenville, Wells Fargo Advisors, LLC, member SIPC. Now back to the show. All righty. Fun Friday edition of Pirate Radio Live. Thank you all for tuning in today. We're back with you Monday, 3 o'clock, all new edition of PRL for Shirley, Chon, and the crew. I am Clip Brock. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you Monday. Jeff Charles, take us home. Have a great night, Eastern Carolina. Thanks for listening to Pirate Radio Live, an exclusive presentation of the voice of the Pirate Nation. This is Pirate Radio, WGHB Farmville, 1250 at 92.7 FM Greenville, WDLX Washington, 930.